Well, the sun is setting, but the action is just beginning inside GCU Arena right now. You see the fans getting excited, heading on inside as Division I men's college basketball continues to heat up here in the Valley with the Lopes facing a tall task tonight going head to head with a power five opponent in the fighting Illini. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show coming at you on Fox 10 Extra and Right now, the Lopes, well, they're still looking for that coveted first win after a shocking loss to Davenport earlier this week in their season opener. Now, the Lopes right now are finishing the home-and-home -home series set up with Jerry Colangelo's alma mater in Illinois. Back in 2017, the Lopes traveled to Champaign and fell short by four points in that game. So tonight they take the court trying to look for a little revenge, avenge for that loss, and also turn the script on what happened against Davenport. And now we bring in our winning broadcast team, Mary Patel, Scott Williams, along for the ride tonight. And guys, I think the best thing um, after a loss like that is, well, you get to go out there today and do it again and you only remember the last game, right? That's as good as you are. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. They uh, have to be up for this team, the Fighting Illini from the University of Illinois in the back end of that home and home that you talked about, Kate. I want to say that the Davenport game was a trap game, but, but this team is uh, is short, short-handed a bit with Prayer and Fisher out. But they've got to come up with a big answer here to take on the Illini. The Illini are coming in here, and they had tested in their first ball game in an overtime. So they will not be taking GCU lightly. They will be ready to play. I'll coach will have them fired up, ready to go. I'm looking for some leadership from some of these guys on this team and stepping up. It's one thing for the coaches in the locker room and practice to prepare them, but it's going to be the players on the court that are going to have to step it up. It was a tough loss uh, from start to finish. Davenport comes away with that 82-73 victory against the Lopes on Tuesday night. Now, my problem with this basketball team from the Lopes was bet from standpoint was they never did anything to take any of the Davenport strengths away, which were shooting the basketball from the outside, penetrating and pitching. GCU played their game. They wanted to fire away from the outside instead of taking advantage of their size inside and their speed at getting to the rack. At the times we saw them go to the basket, and when they started to put a little full court press on towards the end of the game, you could see Davenport begin to show some cracks. They were lethal from the arc. Carlos Johnson, 22 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double. Labor just with five and three. But uh, 15 of 30 from three-point land. Davenport. And they, they were fantastic wow. at penetrating and moving the basketball, sharing it, playing together. As a result, the Lopes were doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one step back threes, just two of 19 from the field. Well, we mentioned Carlos Johnson. He had that double-double at 22 points. He's carried this team in the past. He's probably going to have to do it again. He was about the only bright spot we saw in the Lopes uniform. He was more aggressive than the other players, but he didn't get enough to get everybody else involved. His outside shot was hit or miss. He made some big ones, and you thought the Lopes were going to make a run towards the end of the first half, but the 30% shooting overall did them in. We're going to be keeping an eye on Johnson and also Io. Dosumu, the 6'5 sophomore guard, 21 points, seven boards against Nichols State. The first time in school history a true freshman has led the team in scoring last season 13.8 points per game. This is, by the way, their 115th season. So Io did a pretty good job last year. He's fantastic. He's on everybody's watch list. Kuzi watch list, Lute Olson's watch list, Naismith's watch list. And I could go on. Yeah. You know, Blue Ribbon, uh, third team All-American. Kid's a fantastic player. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do on the floor. Another guy you talked about uh, before we went to broadcast, he said he has a smooth touch, Andres Feliz. I really like this kid. He's a fantastic player. He really knows how to, understands how to play the game as a senior, 6'2", 195 pounds. He was three, uh, seven for 14 from the field the other night, just one of four from behind the arc, but now he had a chance to watch him warm up. He was shooting like Steph Curry. So it'll be interesting to see how the Lopes attack this. And they choke off the inside and live with the outside shot or they get out on those perimeter players. 23 points, 11 rebounds for Police in their debut against Nichols State. Sets it up a little bit for you. We are counting you down until tip-off at the top of the hour. We'll send it back upstairs to Kay Longworth.
Well, guys, before you go, I want to revisit something Scott was talking about, about looking for that leader. And I think that's something the three of us have been talking about a lot. And really, a lot of folks watching this Lope Squad, you're wondering who's going to be that Jared Martin, perhaps, out there. Who's going to go out and ignite the fire on this team? And I just wonder, from your vantage point, have you seen anyone emerge for the Lopes? Or who do you want to see really step up? Because tonight's the game to do it. Kate, I really think it's got to be the two all uh, preseason WAC performers in Johnson and Labor. Those guys get the bulk of the minutes, they get the bulk of the shots. They got to lead by example out there, not just what they're scoring, but all the little intangible things. Diving on the floor for a loose ball, crashing back on defense and helping out. All the things to get all the other teammates fired up. Isaiah Brown at 26 in the debut. You know, it was 608 days between games for him. He sat a long time. He is definitely a mature player on the floor, could he be a potential leader for this team? All right, you guys make some good points. And uh, the one thing we have heard, Dan Marley, I don't think he cares who is the leader. He just wants to see it. He has preached that year in and year out, that he can only do so much behind the scenes. He wants someone to take ownership when they are on the court. Will tonight be the night where we see a new leader emerge? And what does Dan Marley think about everything from that Davenport loss to what's at hand tonight? We'll find out right after this when Barry goes one-on-one -on -one with Coach Marley here on the Lopes pregame show. Is known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales. Sanders and Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new expedition with 0% financing for 72 months plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanders and Ford. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. The Lopes travel to San Diego State on the road for their first game against the Aztecs. That coming up on Wednesday. Then they'll return here to GC Arena to take on Arkansas Pine Bluff, Montana State. And then it's to the Virgin Islands for the Paradise Jam Tournament. St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of your Lopes, Dan Marley. The Virgin Islands, uh, that'll be a nice little sojourn down to St. Thomas for the Paradise Jam. Yeah, it's good to MTE. It's got some really good teams in it, so we're excited to be a part of it. The, uh, the uh, team coming back, uh, taking on uh, the Fighting Illini of Illinois. It was a couple of years ago. You traveled up to the uh, State Farm Center up there on the campus of, of the uh, University of Illinois to take on the uh, Fighting Illini, and you played them really tight there a couple of years ago. Yeah, we played really well. Unfortunately, we didn't come away with a win, but we battled and got it down to the last minute and uh, couldn't find a way to... Uh to win the ball game, but uh, I thought we played really well on their campus against a good Big Ten team, so uh, we're excited to get the matchup here tonight. Coach Underwood, uh, in his third season at the helm as head coach, uh, had a lot of turnover in his recruiting class. He's got some uh, some big boys on, on the roster here tonight. Yeah, very talented squad. He's got a five-star center who's seven feet, about 290. Um, an NBA point guard or two guard that's probably going to be a top 10 draft pick. So they're a very talented team. They're big, they're physical, they play extremely hard. So this is going to be a great test. When you look at your team coming off a, a tough, tough loss against Davenport, with one guy that you said, well, he carried the load a lot in, the, in that tournament and he's carried the team prior. And Carlos Johnson, he, he certainly had a, some points in the game. He, the, as far as a debut, he had 22 points on the night. Well, I don't think anybody played well. Everybody's going to, you know, we need Carlos to score. He, he did a good job scoring. Uh, his percentage wasn't great, but uh, did a better job rebounding. I think he's got to be able to do all certain things. So uh, I don't think Carlos played well. And to be honest, I don't think anybody played well. We knew that was going to be a, uh, a hard game. Uh, that's a really good Division II program that won 27 games. Uh, they played extremely well, made 15 threes. And to be quite honest, we didn't play well. Defensively, we were very undisciplined, uh, made some runs in the second half, could never get a stop when we needed it, and we shot the ball poorly, uh, two for 19 from three. Uh, and even inside the arc, we had a lot of good looks at it. We just didn't get it done. And, and when you do that, it doesn't matter where you're playing against a good team, you're going to lose. And that team is a good team. And uh, we got to find a way to bounce back. And uh, we had a couple good practices. And 
Uh, we'll just come out tonight and fight, fight as hard as we can. And uh, we expect to win this game. I told our guys that, uh, you know, we're at the point where we expect to win every game, especially every home game. Uh, this will be a great test for us, but our guys are up for the challenge. Carlos, uh, can he carry the team? I mean, you got two guys that are out. Right no, now. we don't. We don't need Carlos to carry the team. Okay. Uh, we need everybody. We got. We, you know, you know, Javon's a, a freshman point guard. Isaiah's a guy that's been uh, in the trenches, been here for a year. Uh, Doobie uh, uh, has been at uh, uh, Mountain West program. Alessandro, this is his four, uh, third year as a, as a junior. So we don't need one guy to, to carry the team. We need the whole team to play as a team. Carlos, there's no, there's no doubt he has to score for us. Mm -hmm. He's got to take good shots, but he's got to get everybody involved too, and he's done that. It's just that right now we're not playing well as a team, and uh, it's early. Um, I expect the struggles here uh, early, especially with you know, not having Oscar. That's a big blow for us. He's a guy that's been a starter since he's been here, um, and he brings a lot to our team. So uh, we just got to keep fighting, try to, try to improve, but one guy can't say, I got to carry this team. That's not going to happen. We got to play better as a unit. Alessandro Laver, you look at the stat sheet, five points, three re rebounds. It appeared that he had some, some I mean, they, they were hitting just, a, um, it was uncanny how many shots they were making, Davenport was, but Chapman down low. Do you, you want to see more from him? Well, we got to see more from Ali, and that was a tough matchup for him to play in that game. Uh, but he's got, I told him uh, yesterday that you're just not a, you're not a role player for this team. You're, you're our best player. You got to act like it. Um, we can try to get through the ball as much as I can, and we can, and he missed a few layups in there, missed some wide open threes, but uh, all good players uh, find way to dominate or to get involved in the game. And him taking five shots is not uh, my problem. I mean, I try to give him the ball. He's got to do a better job of getting open, of fighting, demanding the ball, and when he gets it, uh, be aggressive. He's got to, you know, he's such a humble kid um, he's got to have a little nastiness to him and understand that he's a really good player and very talented. And there's times where he's got to go down there and, and demand the ball and make something happen. You guys did make something happen with about two minutes left to go. You were pressing. There was a sense of urgency. Yeah, that was false. That was, that, you know, that you got down there and you started pressing. We were behind the whole game. As I said, that urgency has got to start from the very beginning. Right. Uh, we, we came out in the second half. They went on a tremendous run. We got it down to, you know, eight, seven, nine points. Uh, several times and we can never come back and get a big stop and kind of get on that run. So the urgency has got to be there from the beginning. The urgency can't be there when you're two, when there's two minutes left on the game and you, you throw a press out there and then start trying to get steals and make a last ditch effort. That's just not going to work. So um, we got to do that from the beginning. Uh, we got to play good, solid, fundamental defense. Uh, we're not going to be a pressing team. We're playing six or seven guys. You can't press uh, and, and wear guys out. We just got to be solid defensively, do what you're supposed to do, and we got to start making shots. Uh, I think we've taken good shots. Um, and as I said, I'm not worried about it. We just got to continue to, to keep our heads down, uh, keep working. We've been very successful for six years. Nothing's changed. Uh, you know, we just got to figure it out, and we will. I, I got no doubt that these guys will figure it out. And as the coaching staff, we got to figure it out too, and we will. Well, what better time than right now against Illinois coming to town here tonight. Yeah, it'll be a great matchup. This is this is fun to have a, a Big Ten a program here and playing in front of our crowd. This, this is big for us. We'll go out and play as hard as we can, and we expect to win. All right, good luck tonight, Coach. Right, thank you. Head Coach Dan Marley, our guest. Stay with us more. The Lopes pregame show continues. Claire Mitchell from the women's volleyball team. Well, she had a life-changing decision to make, and thank goodness for the women's volleyball team. She is now a member of that squad. We'll have more as we continue with the Lopes pregame show after this timeout. Courtney, and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. We're counting you down to tip off here on Fox 10 Extra as uh, 
Folks in here, a sellout crowd getting ready for the big matchup against Illinois as Grand Canyon looks for its first win on the season. I'm Kate Longworth. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We have a lot to talk about when it comes to men's basketball. We'll be continuing to do that as we get you to the top of the hour. But first, we take a little time out to talk a little bit about women's volleyball here at GCU, which continues to perform beyond expectations. Right now, the Lopes are in second place in WAC play and helping fuel the team's success is the play of freshman setter Claire Mitchell. Now they often say that athletes will benefit if they dance outside of their sport to help keep their skills in check and also their endurance. Well Claire took that to a whole new level. She excelled on the dance floor as well as the volleyball court. Take a look at how she found her love for the game and found her way back to the game as well. It was a lot of pressure to make the right one because it was a life-changing decision. So my mom was a college coach growing up. I was always in the gym playing volleyball, and she always had foreign students that lived with us, and so I was just always around volleyball players and the game. In fourth grade is when I took up dancing. It was just jazz, hip hop, and like fun tap, and I did ballet my fifth grade year. I became serious in about sixth grade. I started dancing with the New York City Ballet in the summers. And then in eighth grade, which is still really young, I was 14, I stayed there by myself for six weeks and trained with them. So at the end of the six weeks, they called my mom in and told her that they wanted me to stay year round. And I was one of three that were chosen on a full ride. So I would have gone to a performing arts high school and just tried to graduate high school as fast as I could. Contact with family would have been very limited, probably just holidays, if I was even able to fly home from New York. When I'd come home from the six weeks, I realized how much I had missed home and like loved the lake and loved playing sports. And I decided that I wanted to have like a real high school experience and that if I didn't enjoy ballet, that I would never get it back. So I wanted to do high school and be a normal kid. It was a really hard decision. It was a lot of pressure to make the right one because it was a life-changing decision. I actually made the decision when I was sitting on a dock <laughs> looking out onto the lake and just thought, I can't leave this. New York wasn't for me and after about two weeks I said no and everyone was very surprised I said no and so the New York City Ballet actually called me like two more times to tell me I had another week to decide because they didn't like my answer of no. I was supposed to take over the head ballerina spot but I would do school for just a couple hours a day and then dance all day probably seven days a week and just constant pain. <laughs> so. I kind of decided I'd made it to the top in the ballet career, and so it was time to move on and try volleyball. No regrets, I'm retired. <laughs> no. I love volleyball because it's a team sport and it takes all the six players and the bench to impact. With ballet, it's you fighting against everyone else and competing constantly for a spot. My first visit to GCU, I was visiting Arizona for a spring break with my family. And my dad was just like, you should just go on a visit. Like, it'd be good practice, just see what it's all about. And then I actually walked on campus and just like felt right. And I really liked the, all the coaches and just love the environment and the campus and all the new facilities, the feeling of being on campus. So I was like, this is where I belong. It's growing so fast and like a whole bunch of kids from my high school are now gonna come here and I have friends. So it's just a small school that's just getting bigger and bigger and building something that's going to be really great. Bumps at three, one, two, three, oh. I think we have a lot of talent and growth that we're just getting into. We have a lot of new people this year and we're getting better and better each year so I'm excited to watch everyone compete and shock people. I got a lot out of ballet, like a lot of body control strength from it so I'm glad I did it but leaving it behind. I don't have to worry about like my body image all the time looking at myself in the mirror constantly and the torture kind of behind that and pressure. So I'm excited just to be like a happy, healthy athlete now. Some big decisions at a young age for Claire, but it's led to some great results. Just recently, the volleyball team secured its seventh straight win, and it tied a Division I win record at 21 against UTRGV earlier this week. All right, the Purple Creek Game Party is underway here, and we want you to be a part of the action. So uh, grab something, and we'll be right back after this with the voice of the Lopes, Michael Parter, joining me right after this. We'll see you then.
When it's here, my dog will probably do it. Came through trippin', trippin'. Came through trippin', trippin'. Came through trippin', trippin'. Diamonds on my wrist, they trippin'. Ice. Came through trippin', trippin'. Came through trippin'. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. All right, we're counting you down to tip off here on Fox 10 Extra here on the Lopes pregame show. And GCU Arena is where it's at. But if you can't be at a game, we're glad you're locked in here at Fox 10 Extra. But you can also follow the game when you're on the road, whether the team is home or away on 1580 The Fanatic with Michael Potter and Paul Coro. They are getting ready for tip off right now. But just moments ago, I was able to catch up with the voice of the Lopes, Michael Potter. Well, it's still early, but what are your initial thoughts of this 2019-2020 squad? Well, my initial thoughts are not a great way to start the season. Uh, tough losing a couple of guys who were going to be starters on your team for this first semester. Hopefully they'll be back uh, sooner than later. But it'll be a nice kind of gut check. You know, Dan Morley said it after the game. These guys got, got kind of an awakening. Let's see how they respond. So I'm excited tonight to see how they respond to that. One of the things we've been talking about in this pregame show is just who is the leader of this team? Obviously, Dan Marley can only do so much at practice and inside the locker room, but from the side of the court, who on the floor needs to take charge, in your opinion? Yeah, I think they're still looking for that, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I think Javon Blackshear Jr. can be a leader, but he's a freshman. So it's very difficult at that time to do that. Isaiah Brown's a guy who has shown a lot of leadership qualities, battling through, not playing for 600, you know, days. A lot of guys respect him. But quite frankly, you'd like Carlos Johnson or Alessandro Levin to take on that mantle, but neither of them have really shown that they're going to do that. Maybe they'll start doing it now because the team does need a leader. And this is a team, Illinois, that might bring that out in the Lopes for sure. Now, you were with the team back in 2017 when the Lopes played this team very hard. It was a four-point game. What stands out to you? Obviously, there's different players out there now. But what stands out to you from that trip you guys made to Champaign for, uh, in 2017? Well, three things. Number one, the standing ovation Jerry Colangelo got when he walked into the arena, a legend there, obviously. Number two, the uh, highlight slam dunk put back by Oscar Freyer. We were right there, and I'm still amazed he did that. And then uh, number three, we love the guy now, but Mike Finke hitting that three. I told him when he got here as a grad transfer, I'm going to boo you the first few times you're on the floor. And he laughed and understood it. It was a great game. Lopes had him right there, but Finke hit that uh, big three, and that put him away. And you've seen in your career as you've been the voice of the Lopes, this team does not shy away from the competition. How do you think this continues to put GCU on the map when they go up against these big programs? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, it helps them in recruiting. Kids want to come in here and play the top teams. Obviously, in conference, there's a couple of key rivalries. But when you can tell them, hey, we went down to Assembly Hall and played Indiana. We've been to Kentucky. We played Louisville home and home. Uh, we've got Illinois, a home and home. The St. Mary's trip was great. There's some great schools and some great teams on the calendar every year. I think that really helps in recruiting. And guys get a chance to see because everyone wants to play with the best or play against the best. And you've been with this team for over a decade. As you've watched Dan Marley at the helm with this squad, how have you seen him leave his mark on GCU basketball? Well, it's the hardest working team uh, in the NCAA. I mean, they take on Dan's persona. And Dan's persona is if there's a problem, just work harder and get better individually. And that makes the team better. And that was really his message to these guys. You each have to get better individually to make the team better. What is it like for you in this role? You're sitting courtside right across from the Havocs. How does it add to your your job when you have this going on, the Havoc, literally? And how does it, does it help your job? Is it harder? What is the atmosphere like for you as you're trying to do your role out here? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, you go to some places, even in Division One, and it feels like a library. It's so quiet. 
This place is rocking, as you can hear right now. So it makes it a lot more fun. The atmosphere is unbelievable. I still catch myself at times looking over going, what, what are they doing right now? It's crazy. And it's a lot of fun to see 2,500, 3,000 students into it from the get-go. So it just makes everything a lot more fun. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about those non-conference games and who the Lopes will be going up against. But when the new calendar year rolls around and WAC play starts, what are you anticipating? How have you seen the WAC competition grow over these past few years? Well, I, it's fantastic. Uh, number one, a lot of the coaches have done great things. I mean, obviously, it's still New Mexico State's conference, so somebody knocks them off. They've got everybody coming back, so that is going to be a tall order this year. Um, but I'm excited to see some of the new teams this year and next year. California Baptist came in and kind of did what we did four, five, six years ago, which is nice to see. I think Dixie State coming in is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this year is going to be really interesting, though. I mean, there's some new coaches, some new faces, so I'm really interested to see how some of these teams play. I still think it's obviously New Mexico State, GCU, Seattle, and UTRGV, the top four teams. All right, well, thank you so much, Michael. I uh, hear you have a job to do, so we'll let you get back to your other duties, and we'll be back with more Lopes pregame show right after this. As a teacher... Your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back. A live look here inside GCU Arena. The party has started as we count you down to tip off between GCU and the Fighting Illini of Illinois in town tonight for quite the matchup. The Lopes still looking for that coveted first win on the season. Will tonight be the night? Well, only time will tell. And it'll all unfold right here on Fox 10 Extra. Right now, the student section, the Havocs, they are in full force. And then there is Jerry Colangelo, who helped orchestrate the meeting of these two teams. This is the end of a home-and-home -home series between these two teams. Back in December of 2017, the Wolves made a trip out there, and that is when Colangelo was honored into the Illinois Basketball Hall of Fame. He, of course, uh, was the captain for the Fighting Illini and did big things in his college career. And, of course, here in the Valley, we've been able to see his love for the game of basketball and other sports carry out. And uh, tonight, get both teams, they obviously hold a special spot in his heart. But he did say we, and he pointed out to me, when I say we, I am referring to the Lopes. So now that is where his alliances lie. So we'll see who comes up big in this one tonight. Scott and Barry will have the action coming at you live right after this. And there's a full house here. It's a sold-out crowd and also some famous people in the crowd will be stepping in uh, to talk with some of them as the game unfolds tonight here on Fox 10. So uh, grab your snack, get the everything ready, get the family on the couch, and get ready because Division I men's college basketball is coming your way. GCU Lopes are ready to get things started here at GCU Arena against Illinois. Who will prevail? Well, only time will tell. We'll see you right after this for game action.
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University. And inside GCU Arena, where tonight, the Lopes welcome the Fighting Illini. Good evening, and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel, Kay Longworth will be along in just a moment. What a matchup. The house is packed. The Fighting Illini for Illinois, coming off a 78-70 victory in overtime over Nichols State, while the Lopes are scuffling after a tough, tough loss to Davenport. Yeah, welcome this Big Ten team into the house. I know the Lopes are excited. The Havocs are fired up. It should be a good one tonight. Let's talk about one of the guys that needs to step up against the Illini, Carlos Johnson. Carlos Johnson has got to be absolutely sensational tonight. He had some moments in the first home opener where he was absolutely brilliant. Shooting the ball from the outside, pump faking, driving hard to the hole, getting some steals, getting out transition. I just like him best when he's attacking that hoop. The double-double for Carlos Johnson, the player for the Illini that he'll be going up against is the 6'5 sophomore guard, Ayo Dosumu. Oh, he is on everybody's All-American watch list, the Kuzi list, Lou Olson list. He's a fantastic player, really knows how to and understands how to lead a team. Another player to look at who had that smooth touch in the warm-ups is the 6'2 senior guard, 23-point performance, the double-double against Nickel State, Andres Felice. Yeah, 7 of 14 from the field, only 1 of 4 from the three-point line, but can really stroke her from the outside. Look for him to mix up a lot of inside and out tonight. We'll see how the Lopes respond after that tough loss to Davenport, taking on the Illini here tonight. It is a sold-out GCU arena. Now down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena and tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Fighting Illini of the University of Illinois and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Kay Scott, a senior majoring in business management. All right, if I could have everyone bow their heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this night. We thank you for allowing us to gather here for this game. We pray for traveling mercy and safety over each and every individual here. We pray that we allow our lights to shine for you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Kay. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by Nadia Salinas, a junior at Valley Christian High School in Chandler. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Gave through the night 
That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the Great job by Nadia Salinas, the junior from Valley Christian High School. The University of Illinois fighting Illini come in 1-0 on the season after a 78-70 overtime win over Nichols State. Their head coach is Brad Underwood in his third season. Former head coach at Oklahoma State where he led the Cowboys to a 20-win season and a trip to the NCAA tournament. Here is his starting five brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Trent Frazier alongside Ayo Dosumu, Andres Feliz, Georgie, Bishanish Billy, and Kofi Coburn. Keep an eye on Coburn, a seven foot, 290 pound rebounding machine. He absolutely throws his body around underneath the basket. Six offensive rebounds on his way to a double double against Nichols on Tuesday night. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Head coach Dan Marley in his seventh season at the helm, 123 and 73. The Lopes coming off an 82-73 loss at the hands of Davenport. Here are head coach Dan Marley starting five. Javon Blackshear Jr., Isaiah Brown, Carlos Johnson, Lorenzo Jenkins, and Alessandro Labor. We're going to keep an eye on Labor tonight. He's got to guard the seven-footer on the other side. Can his slim-down size, can he effectively work the pick-and-pop game and try to drive, draw the big man out away from the basket? And once he does that, will he have the speed to get to the rack? The associate head coach is Marvin Menzies. The assistant coach is Chris Prevalone and Isaac Chu. Director of basketball operations is Dylan Hidalgo. The special assistant to that coach, Johnny Hill. The video coordinator is Matt Lopez. The director of sports medicine, Jordy Hackett. And the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. The assistant coaches for Coach Underwood, Orlando Antigua, Ron Coleman, and Stephen Gentry. Sold out, GCU Arena. Pretty much say that every night. Here are the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Sanderson Ford, the best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Top 25 things to do in Illinois. Number 15, the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. Build a shed in the paint and lock it. His Illini are coming in there to try to wreck havoc in the, in the GCU house tonight, and that's that painted area in purple down underneath. And number 12. Starved Rock State Park. It's an Oglesby, Illinois. Of course it is. Yeah. Okay, so the, the folks have to move the rock tonight from side to side to move the defense for higher percentage shots and drives to the basket. Shot only 30% in that first game against a D2 team. Must do better than that tonight right from the very get-go. And the Lincoln Presidential Library is the number one thing to do in the state of Illinois. And when you think things are tough out there, you need leadership. And who amongst these Lopes is going to emerge as that leadership on the floor tonight? Lopes fans remain on their feet till the Lopes hit the opening bucket. Kelly Pfeiffer, Chris Beaver, and Eric Curry are the officials tonight. We are 
are underway in Phoenix. The Illini in control. Osumu up quickly. Coburn off of his hands. Picked up by Jenkins. Back to Blackshear Jr. Moves right. Crossed up. Floater. Good! Well, that was a nice play by the young freshman point guard. He likes that shot right in front of the basket. Again, feeding down there to Coburn. Labor on him. Wow. Well, that's the problem with the 290-pound body. You got to meet him early. Stand him up before he gets to the free throw line so he can't get that good low post position. He gets it down there five feet from the bucket. That's an, You're going to be in a bad way. Coburn at the line. Two of six in the opener. Just 33%. Kingston, Jamaica, by way of Christ the King in New York City. That was smooth. It's warm down here, folks. 84 degrees currently. Champagne right around 27. Ooh, that yes. Arctic blast is coming down. Remember yes. those when you were in I, Chicago? I, <laughs> all too I well. in Minneapolis, man. Uh-huh. The Hawk is out in Chicago right now. And down in Champaign, it ain't feeling much better. I'd like, I'll take this 10 degrees over normal we got going on right here. Yeah. Oh, where made that first one. It looked good. Second one just rattled out. Bounce pass. Carlos Johnson turning to the bucket. Up. Off the rim. Pulled down by the Illini. Carl Johnson picked up his dribble, got in a bad way on that left wing. He's got to find a teammate to bail him out. There's plenty of time left on the shot clock. Down low, easy bucket for Coburn from Bichon is Billy. Yeah, they can't let them just keep dumping the basketball inside to the big fella six feet from the bucket. Lecture to his left. Kick back out, open look for Jenkins. Too heavy. Rebound Coburn. Three outside shots on the first trips down the floor for GC. Something to keep an eye on. Turnover. The Illini had 53 rebounds in their win against Nichols State. Yeah, a, a plus 30 against Nichols. And it, it was an absolute beatdown on the boards. And you come out, obviously they're big and long and strong. But that's the, and, and you wonder how Nichols stayed around even forced overtime in that basketball game being out-rebounded by 30. Labor drives, turns, twists around, and good. So that's where Labor's got his advantage. Making the big fella shuffle those big sneakers down there and try to get by him. If he can't get all the way to the hole, you get a nice little mid-range jump shot out of it. Far side to Fraser, high by Blackshear. Tight. Carlos. Back out front. Police moving to the near side. Kicks back out. Bishon is Billy. Six on the shot clock. Frazier, this defense is locking him down early. Had to throw it up at the buzzer. Oh, thank you, says the Illini. Well, the prayer was answered. Great defense by the Lopes. You got two-pointer out of it. Foot was on the line. But that's that's if they get stops like that, our defensive effort like that out of this team every time down the floor. Countered by Blackshear. Yeah, Blackshear looking over at the Havocs like, yeah, we're going to be a different team tonight than we saw us on Tuesday night. This team is much better starting this basketball game with higher level of energy. Four for Blackshear early. Two of two from the field. Down low, Coburn. Turns. Draws the foul, the hoop and the harm. Yeah, Coburn is just putting a little campfire down there in the paint right in front of the basket. Warming his hands down there. And he steps out of the lane just long enough and times his entry into the lane where he doesn't get a three-second violation down there in that painted area. And they're just feeding him high, like a high handoff right in front of the rim there. And he's got a nice little left shoulder turn into his right-hand hook. He was out here about an hour and 15 minutes before the game doing nothing but doing left shoulder turns and right-hand hooks. And we saw it. Early already in this basketball game. Makes a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Six for Cobra. Just underway in Phoenix. GCU taking on the fight in Illini. A little too aggressive that time. Doobie had that basketball, was trying to do a dribble handoff and got banged by one of the Illini players. Osumu, his first. Blackshear takes the inbound from Carlos Johnson. 
Jenkins. Burns comes back out. 14 on the shot clock. Blackshear sees an opening. Jumper. Loose ball. Here come the Illini. Osumu. Floater. Short. Think it's got a hand on it. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Illinois. You know, already getting a lot of acts in that painted area. We talk about building a wall, holding those guys up out of that painted area. You can see Labor Coburn go to the ground as Labor's trying to get up. Goes off of his left ball and out of bounds. Lewis Paul. GCU. Yeah, see, now that's that all-out defensive pressure that I like to see out of the slope team. What we're used to seeing out of this team. We didn't see anything that like that for 35 minutes in that game on Tuesday night. But there's Carlos Johnson doing what he does best, getting in that passing lane, causing half. Coach Underwood didn't, uh, he appreciated the rebounding in that opener, but he said there should be collisions under that rim, like freight trains with those two big men that they have in Coburn and Ishan Billy. Blackshear puts it in. The kid looking sharp early on. What a backdoor pass that time by Labor. And a good move without the basketball by Blackshear. I thought when the little five, ten guy got amongst the trees, he'd be afraid, but he's fearless underneath that hoop. Frazier, far side. Looking inside, they feed Coburn. Off the glass, not there. Coburn with the rebound, loose ball up top. Short, rebound, Isaiah Brown, GCU, up the court. Brown, taking it. Whistle call. Well, nice job of game rebounding. It wasn't the prettiest of securing the rebound, but they were down there fighting and strapping and finally got away with the ball, and I love that way Brown goes hard the other way. I got to go back to this one prior. Alessandro Labor, just a little eye contact. Blackshear with six. Early on, we're tied at eight. Move them out. It's a Ranger Roundup sale at Sanderson Ford. 44 Rangers now in the stalls starting at 28.9. Head on in to Arizona's largest Ford dealership and head out in a new Ford. This is Sanderson Ford Country. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. It's a sold out crowd here at GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. The Lopes and the Illini tied at eight early on. And Javon Blackshear Jr., the four-star recruit, local product from Shadow Mountain High School out, shooting three of four from the field, six points. Well, I like that first one right there. That kind of, That's the one that gets him going, that move from left to right, gets him right out in front of the basket. And once you visualize that ball going through hoops, the second one's easy, and I love that one there. That's just down there fighting amongst the trees, young fella getting it done on the early start. Three early turnovers by the Illini. Six points off of those turnovers by GCU. GCU traditionally is so good, even early in the season, as these baseline out of bounds situations. Let's see what Coach Marley has him run here. Out to Blackshear. Brown. Looked inside. Bounce pass. Jenkins. Kick back out. Labor. Oh, no room for that three. And she didn't end. Heavy on the rebound. Loose ball. Brown. Picked up. Johnson. He wants three. Here come the Illini. Osumu, far side, Frazier drives baseline. 
Goes left hand off the glass, doesn't drop, draws the foul. Well, being aggressive, Coach Marley wants his weak side defense to get over there outside that restricted area and step in there, give it your body, and take a charge. Last time down the floor out of that timeout, interesting, Illinois came out in a little zone defense and it messed up whatever play was designed to attack a man-to-man -man defense on that baseline out of bounds. They got a decent shot and an offensive rebound, something the Lopes will have to be prepared for for the rest of this ball game. It's Illinois showing ability to go to a little 2-3 zone. Frazier at the line now, perfect five for five on the season. Almost like a laser, though. It is a relatively flat shot. You're right about that. Got them both to go and works. Lopes find themselves down too with the basketball. Blackshear left. Near side, Labor towards the baseline. Bishan is Billy with the left hand that doesn't drop for Labor. Oh, I like that move by Labor. I know he didn't get the finish, but I like that shot six feet from the basket. Three is off by Frazier. Loose ball. Bishanish Billy back to Frazier. Kick back out quickly. Griffin hits it. Yeah, they all got that one because Brown was lazy on that defensive board. He didn't turn and go back to the basket. Stood out there some 15 feet away, and the ball bounced towards him. One of his guys, one of the Illinois guys, just stepped right in there and picked it up off the floor. Up over the top, out of bounds. Trying to get it to Jenkins was Labor. A 5-0 run here coming out of that first time out. Not a big deal, but with the basketball, Lopes want to make sure that they get a stop on this possession. Don't want to lose touch with this line I team. Near side, Felice. Gosumu stops, pops. Out, Blackshear with a rebound, brings it up. Cuts back, Brown wants three. Give it to him! Uh, nice job. Blackshear does such a good job getting that Ooh. ball down below the free throw line. Almost comes up with a steal there. But it sucked the defense down so far in that painted area because everybody wanted to drop down to the level of the basketball. When they kick it back out to Brown, he's wide open. See, watch him penetrate. Just get that ball down there to that free throw line. Defense sinks down, and Brown gets an open shot as a result. The little things to make your teammate better play. J.J. Rimes in. Loved it. Did you see the emotion on the bench? I, I love that. Guys got to really all pull together. Everybody on the floor and on the bench cheering one another up. Fully side by Brown. Moves right. Floater high off the glass. Not there. Bishanish Billy with the rebound. Marked by Labor. Left hand by Bishanish Billy in. Five now. Uh, plus five for the fight in the line eye on the glass. And they were a plus 30. In the first game, as a reminder, so at this rate, they'll be plus 25 or plus 30 tonight. Bounce pass underneath off the glass by J.J. Rimes. Uh, Junior's doing his thing out there tonight. He is spoon feeding his guys. He got Rimes a bucket on that one. It was Brown before. He's really looking for his teammates. Bounce pass inside Dosumu. Not going to drop. Re oh! J.J. Rimes trying to get the rebound. Yeah, he had to do himself a couple push ups. He knew he had that one. He just kind of squirted off of his fingertips. Look at this one by Blackshear again. Even though he's driving to the basket, he keeps his eyes open, surveys the defense, and a beautiful slip of the basketball between two defenders. Bishanishvili checks out, Kipper Nichols in. Even his hair looks better tonight than it did in that home opener. Kavon? Yeah, yeah. I, I like it like that a little bit. You know, looser. It was kind of like tight yeah. and, and bound in different places. I like that loose look. He's playing a lot of loose as a result. Rebound underneath. Foul. Well, this is going to be a problem. Gonna have a tough night. This is going to be a problem if they can't keep the white shirts off the glass. They're going to be pulling that basketball out of the net far more often than, than they would like. But look at those two guys just going hard to the basket. We watched them warm up, Barry. All they did was go to do uh, drills yep. where they were around the basket, where they'd be picking rolls to the basket for high handoffs or getting the ball off the glass after a rebound. Coburn already in this game, eight points and three boards. Labor's going to have to check out with two. That means Louis Bengai is going to come in. Well, Bengai's got some size, but he doesn't have the LBs to bang with Coburn underneath.
Raw player from Cameroon, Louis Bengay. He's going to get some quality minutes here. He's been called upon early with labor with two fouls, and he gets picked off the turnover. Police. Yeah. Well, we know Bengay's raw with the basketball in his hands. He's not an offensive talent yet. But he, he panicked with the ball. He, he, he threw that thing like it was a live grenade and, and was afraid at the count of five it was going to explode in his hands the way he threw that ball. The only thing I'll say about that is those point guards, when he see being guy that far away from the ball, from the basket with the ball, they just got to really run right to him and, and, and do a handoff where he can just hand it off to him and get him in a more comfortable position on the floor. Ropes better be careful, this game might break open. Police. Blackshear's gonna have to check out. He's got a couple of personal fouls. Seven of eight from the line are the Illini. The Wolves haven't Paid the charity strike for visit yet. Yeah, and most of those trips to the free throw line because they've taken the ball inside to the basket. He also got eight points in the paint as well. So 15 of their 20 points as a result of going inside. Kipper Nichols called. Third team foul. Inbound by Carlos Johnson. Careful. Knocked out by Griffin. That ground that went hard into the first row there. Yeah, he's saying he got bumped while he was jumping for that ball. The officials let him play on. I don't mind that at all. I, li I like when the officials let him play. I don't like those ticky-tack whistles. I and mean, that's an obvious foul right there. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it's some grown young men. Let them play. Brown. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, he just hesitated. Yeah, put that put that second hand on top of the basketball. Officials jumped all over that one. And we'll try to see. Watch this right hand comes Ooh. on the ball, and then he drops it again. And that's an easy call for the officials there. 1240 in county. Need to stop here. Police. Near side. Kick back out. Quick ball movement. Nichols looking to feed Coburn. Yeah, nice job by Bain guy running the post, not letting Coburn catch the ball. Demonte Williams, Coburn alone underneath. Got a hand on it to Bain guy. Yeah, I got a, Bain guy got the block, but I think it was Carlos Johnson that got the foul before the ball went. The shot went up. Yeah, Carlos Johnson just reached in there when. You can see Coburn brings it down. Johnson gets him right there, but, but the guy was he up tall it. for the block. Yeah, he had that block. Doesn't go for Coburn. 10 points, 11 boards in his debut. I'm impressed with the big fella. Moves good out on the floor, strong underneath, playing to his advantage. And already a plus eight on the glass now for Illinois. Six zero run by the Illini. Loose ball off of Johnson, picked up by the Illini. Back-to-back ah, -back turnovers. Nope. Just can't have that. Just a sloppy, a, a sloppy pass to the wing, and it's turned over. And back inside they go. Coburn swatted there by Jenkins, I believe. The turnaround not there. Coburn jumps up. Loose ball. The Lopes come out of it. J.J. Rhymes. Under 12 to go. Opening half. Jenkins alone driving. Goes left hand high off the glass, doesn't go. Rebound and foul underneath. Rhymes is foul, or Bengai. Timeout on the floor, 11.46 on the clock. The Illini up by eight.
Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. The Illini on top of the Lopes, 21-13, 11.46 to go, opening half, a sold-out GCU arena in Phoenix. Take a look at our BSN athletic calendar. Coming up, men's and women's swimming versus the Air Force. Women's volleyball, big matchup against the Yankees, the top team in the WAC. Men's soccer against UNLV. On Monday, women's volleyball back at it against Cal Baptist. Men will, basketball team travels to their first road game at San Diego State. Women's basketball takes on Southern Utah. Check out GCULopes.com for all the information. How about Kofi Coburn? Oh, I He's love. a wrecking ball. He really is something fun to watch down there. Look at him just do his work early there and seal on the reverse of that basketball. He does it one more time here. Catching it down low. He's got 10 points going around with four boards. Right now, because of all of that inside work Coburn and his buddies are doing, they're a plus eight on the offensive rebounds. You got nine second chance points. I mean, they're, they're just manhandling them underneath. Getting fired up by one of his mates down there saying he's they're trying to tell him, like, you just keep doing what you're doing because there's nobody out there right now in a purple jersey that can stop. Who on the Lopes is going to man up there and take on that challenge? A guy at the line. Illini, 12 and 21 last season, 1 and 9 on the road. Finished 7 and 13 in the Big Ten Conference. Beat Northwestern in that opener before falling to Iowa in the Big Ten Tourney. They were, they were much better in the second half of the season in the first half. And they're returning 85% of their offense. This team is only getting better on a, uh, this uh, Illini and I coaching staff. Mercy Coburn! <laughs> A simple back pick there, got caught ball watching. The screen comes, no time to react. They just throw it up for Coburn, and he slams it home. Got a dozen points, he's making it look easy. Johnson, step back. Inside, Ben Guy off of his hands. He's gonna have to put Labor back into the game, Ben Guy. Having some problems on the court. Turn around there, here comes Jenkins. Brown. Step back. Been a little chilly here for the Lopes. Osumu. That's a pro move right there. Osumu just went down, sized up the defense, realized I can get right here to the pinch post, that area where the uh, free throw lines meet, and get a nice little jump shot. He calmly knocked it down. Three minutes without a bucket until now. And boy, did they need that out of Carlos Johnson. We talked about who's going to step up and be a leader on the floor. I think it's got to be Labor or Johnson since Labor's on the bench with foul trouble. Johnson's going to have to do it here for the next few minutes. Williams up top, off of the fingertips. Loose ball, the Illini pick it up. 14, 13 on the shot clock. Got to get those 50-50 balls when you're battling a team like the Illini. Laser down to Williams, too much for him. A long three, short. Brown comes up with it. Brown trying to inch his way in, drives, kicks out to Rhymes. Rhymes off of the rim. Loose ball. Jenkins racing after it. Illini will take possession. Let's go back one more time to this Carlos Johnson three-pointer. I mean, that little snap dribble right to left, kept it low, down below his knees. To create some space to get a cleaner look at the basketball, the basket hoop. But one of the things I, I, I dislike about that is it's very one on one oriented. So you got a bunch of guys standing around watching him do that, and everybody else is locked up on the man. So should he miss, very small chance of getting an offensive rebound. I get better when the ball's moving around, players are moving, and then if a shot is missed, you have a higher percentage of getting an offensive rebound. But when it goes in, it looks good. Robert's on the bench, but they bring in Bishanisvili and also Bosman's Verdon. Bishanisvili over to quickly. Ball movement. Wow, wide open look. Illini off of the rim. Loose ball. Underneath. Look what I found. Oh, went out of bounds. Yeah, I, I think he had uh, the big fella jumping from out of bounds back inbounds, but he hadn't reestablished his 
position back in the field of play. And that's why there's a violation. He didn't like it, but it was totally the right call. Waver back in. Johnson threads the needle. Whistle. Foul. That is when Carlos Johnson is at his best. I know he'd make a three-point shot every now and again, but when he's at his best, he's driving that ball to the hole and getting to that rack. Because if he doesn't finish, 50% of the time, if not more, he draws a foul and gets a trip to the free throw line. Remain Hamlin in for Bishanishvili. Bishanishvili with two personal fouls. Ryan Finbau, the black shear. Right by, by, there by Frazier. Out to Labor. Labor backs in, into the paint, turns, hesitates. Right hand, and he drops it in. Oh, good to see him back on the floor. Beautiful footwork underneath. A little show up and then go under to the hoop. Under nine to go, opening half. Stuck there. this one by Labor one more time here. Nice spin move. Little head and shoulder fake. Gets the defense to bite and then slips back two but three between the two defenders and lays it in the hole. He really working. He looks good in that Lobos uniform. Slim down, moving his feet well. Inside Jenkins, top of the key. Just don't need that one out of Jenkins right now. Hadn't hit nothing. And he's going to pull a 16-footer. You get better opportunity to get a better shot. It's too early in the shot clock for Jenkins to be firing from right there. Frazier. Bosman Verdon trying to drive it. Not there. Rebound underneath. Up high. That doesn't drop. That's where I like play. Jenkins on that glass pulling down those boards. Nice job, young fella. Blackshear, near side. Rhines. Johnson. Driving, kick back out. Jenkins looking for three. Give it to him! In your mouth, Williams. Pace is the first one. I start talking bad about him. He says, well, let me step back here a little farther and knock it down from behind the yard. Looks right back in his ball game. Oh, no, is that three on labor? Lead run for GCU. Timeout on the floor. Three point lead by the Illini. Back at GCU Arena, very detailed. Scott Williams, so glad you could join us here for this matchup at a sold-out GCU Arena. I love that little penetrate pitch, knock it back out there to Jenkins, and he he shows me that he can make the outside shot. Oh, over three going into that shot, probably oh, knocked it down from that corner pocket three ball. Well, it is clear that uh, when Coburn is taking a seat on the bench, that's the time for the Lopes to try to make some A. Yeah, they're going to have to hope the big fella doesn't have the win that he can play with. He played 37 minutes the other night, so yeah. better not rely on that. Better get two and three bodies on this young fella, keep him away from the inside, you move him out from the basket where he can't do so much damage. Definitely a lot more energy than the uh, Lopes exhibited here the other night. Yeah, I love the hustle. They were doing a nice job out there. You know, we start with that little left shoulder turn, Kids didn't get it to go, but you got a bunch of guys crashing the glass, trying to get the extra possession, getting some deflections. He goes back out to the outside. Then Carlos Johnson, he got himself going, almost got the steal there, showing good leadership on the defensive end. That led to a bucket the other way, a nice little backdoor pass, and the Mighty Mouse finishing on the inside amongst some of the big guys. Well, so far, three of six from the arc, Scott, and after a two for 19 performance in that game uh, that we shall uh, soon forget about, hopefully. Yeah, you know, that's one of those ones you watch the tape once and you burn it, you never want to watch it again. It was that bad. I mean, this is a D2 team that got beat by 50, and they come into your place where the Lopes have been fantastic for the last five years. And really, well, they go wire to wire, and it was a, you know, 11 point basketball uh, game, but it, it never really seemed that close in that second half. They, they had command. They were comfortable, moved the basketball around. When the Lopes did cut it to like 9 or 11, they'd hit a big 3 <laughs> to go back up 13 or 14. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to Gibby.
www.gcu.edu. Students inspiring student scholarship fundraiser prior to this game. Find out more. It's a wonderful, wonderful scholarship. A lot of first generation college attendees get the opportunity that many of us take for granted. Great atmosphere here in Phoenix. The Illini in town. They'll be traveling down to Tucson to battle the Wildcats to close out this trip to Arizona. And you know they're happy to come down here in this 80 degree weather. You get an off day tomorrow. Probably a little practice just to move the legs, get some shots up before they have to battle the Wildcats. But. You know, I, I'm impressed with this team. Okay? They got some. They got some real athletes and got some size. And you know, first 10 minutes, they really have showed it. Jenkins, not there. Rebound pulled down by the Illini. Now, I don't want to start falling in love with that outside shot, young man. I praise you for hitting that three, but let's go inside and attack. That's like the Illini did right there on that little five-foot floater. Beautiful. Under seven and a half to go. Opening half. Try to move on Frazier. Little teardrop. See, I like that. We're the smallest guy on the floor right now. He's not afraid to drive the ball to the basket. This freshman's got some moxie. Colbert's on the floor. Eight points for Blackshear. Four or five from the field. Oh, no. Oh, look who got three. Yeah, hey, trying to front that post. If you find yourself out there 12 or 14 feet from the basket, you better get back around behind the big fella because that's an easy lob over the top. He's got plenty of room to finish on the other side. Jenkins turning on Frazier. That's off the mark. Knew it when it left his hand. Fra Jenkins is having some problems finding the hoop. Shot selection, maybe something he might want to take a look at and reassess. Police. Cobra puts it on the floor, gave it off. Great job defensively. Carlos Johnson not going to drop. Oh, $10 move with a 10 cent finish. You got to concentrate, make sure you get that ball in the hole, well, either layup or dunk. Labor can't foul. He's got to let him go to the hole. Under six to go. Vishanishvili over the scorer's table. Blackshear, floater, short. Gets his own rebound, looks for a bucket. Doesn't happen. Got in there a little too deep amongst three of those trees, and they were able to get a piece of that shot. Johnson. Blackshear crosses center court. Leads for Johnson quickly. Labor drives in the paint. Left hand. Hoop and a harm. He couldn't have done that a year ago, Barry. He didn't have the speed. Losing those 20 pounds has allowed him to be able to go past the 290 pounder, get all the way to the rack. And one of the things we talked about, they know Labor can shoot the three. That's in the scouting report. What's not in the scouting report is now that he's lost these 20 pounds, is that he can also move and get to the basket. Two trips there last game. One of two. A little bit of help. Three point play. Yeah, but I like that. You know, it's a little early in the game, but they get him out on defense so he doesn't pick up a third foul here in this first half. And if there's another stoppage of the play, he may be going back in this basketball game on the offensive end. They need his scoring. Sato Sumu make his way back to the Locker room area, away from the bench. We'll keep an eye on that. Frazier. Williams, kick back out. Griffin, not there. Oh, blue shot is really pushed in the back by Bengai. I tell you what, he's a smart player. He knows how to work those angles. They don't run any plays for him. But he realizes he got to go ahead and get it off the offensive glass. Remind me of my days back when I was with the Chicago Bulls. Phil Jackson 
I was there for four years with that guy, and he never drew up one play for me, Barry. That's, br that's brutal. Who did he draw it up for that 23 guy? Yeah, ball hog. Oh, I, I, if I wanted to try to get a field goal, I had to go get it off the offensive glass, and that's exactly what he did on that possession. You know what? You, you got three rings, but it, you really wonder if, he, if Phil drew up some plays for you. How many of you guys could have really, how many you could have got? Sky's the limit. I know. In and out, Chickens pulls it down. Lisa Brown over to Blackshear. I like that six points, gaining a chance to cut it to four, even three with a three. Chickens near side. Labor comes out. Ooh, careful. Come on, yeah. y'all. Luckily, they get it back. Blackshear waits, steps up. Off the rim. Rebound, the lineup. That's just a sloppy possession for the Lopes right there. They've had a couple where they just had unforced errors on the offensive end. This goes back out inside. Bishanishvili moving on labor, left hand and in. Wow, that was impressive there. He got that basketball, surveyed the defense for a hot second. Realized there was nobody on that left side of the floor. Put his right shoulder right into Labor, who does not want to pick up a foul. Threw it in with the left hand. Blackshear weaving. Labor has some time for a three. Yes! Five point Alana lead. Now oh, that's nice basketball right there. Hitting him with the drive and in the outside shot. Driving, weave around, left hand and in. Again. Can't just roll out the red carpet for these guys to take it right to the bucket. I mean, there's a red light right over the top of the hoop, and the Illini are going to it like moths to a flame. Griffin got that bucket. Lopes four of eight from the arc. Timeout on the floor, 3.35 to go. The Lopes trail the Illini by seven. Look at this one by Blackshear, hard to the rack there. Put some contact, concentration, and finish, and you come back. Kick it to the big man outside, let him can the three. Oh, washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCU helps you stay focused on staying purpose-driven. They give you the tools to find what your purpose truly is. Once I got out here, I kind of had an identity crisis. Walking around campus, I saw a flyer for something called Java Jams. When I first walked onto that stage, my heart was pounding, but I was able to find myself as an artist. My name is Joseph, and I earned my Bachelor's of Arts degree at GCU. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to Lopes Basketball here on Fox 10 Extra. Right now, folks, we've got a game, a seven-point game right now. GCU trails the Fighting Illini with just under four to go in the half. And before the game, a very special event, students inspiring students. And the goal of this program is to continue to, to, continue to transform area education grades kindergarten through 12 by offering hundreds of full tuition scholarships here to GCU. Life has truly been changed for so many with this program. It starts with high schoolers attending what's called the Learning Lounge here at GCU, where current students will tutor them. Both Jerry Colangelo, Brian Mueller investing a lot in this program for the school. And going back to that Learning Lounge, students at a young age will be tutored here by current GCU students, and then they will go on accepting a scholarship thanks to students inspiring students. And they will become many times first generation college graduates in their family. And then what's so great is they now become a tutor in their own learning lounge, starting to impress the young minds of other students. A really great full circle uh, yep. program here that President Mueller has helped establish. Tremendous program. Amazing when they come in for that free tutoring from GCU students, and they ask sometimes what school they attended, and it's the same one that they are attending. Some of them don't realize that kids from their school even can dream about going to college. That can happen. 
Under three and a half to go. Opening half. Police looks right. Griffin with some quality minutes this half. These final three minutes of this half, very important to this GCU team. They did not do a good job on Tuesday finishing the first half. Oh, look at that turnover. I like that ball pressure by Brown. Not sitting back and, and packing in, but just really getting out there, pressuring that basketball. Look at this, turns it over right there, up over his head. And we'll whistle every time. Laver in, Ben Guy out, 310 on the clock. They're getting Laver in for offense, putting Ben Guy in there when they're on the defensive side of the ball. Trying to protect Laver, getting that third foul. Blackshear Laver, 8 of 14, 18 points combined. Rest of the team, 4 of 14, 12 points. Uh, I got a foul right there, and that dribble looks strange, trying to do the dribble handoff, but a little too much body contact. It ends up being a moving screen by Blackshear. See, that just, just throws that arm out there. Just got to go shoulder to shoulder, let Brown run off of him to the ball. That'll come over time. He'll, he'll get the hang of that one. Blackshear with his third. And see him getting up off the bench before the end of the half. That's a blow. Frazier called. Well, Brown down. Frazier contesting it, though. Yeah, let's take, a take, a, take a look at this one one more time here. I think Brown does a nice job selling Frazier's arm into him. <laughs> Coach Underwood uh, Some might have a little bit of argument there. Yeah, both of these coaches out here in this first half have been working these officials for some calls. Brown right, kicks back over his head. Labor pulled down the three, leaves it for Brown. And he is. Oh, come on, that's a start. Wow. Moving screen, they got him for throwing his leg out. Look at Coach the official singer. Stance is too wide on that screen. He whistled for his third. Trying so hard to protect him on the defensive end for picking up his third foul. Never would have realized he'd get one on the offensive end. He's going to have to sit the rest of the half. Well, Laver and Blackshear are now on the bench. This is time for the Illini to close this opening half strong with those two players on the bench. Jenkins got it off of Coburn, and it's going to be GCU's ball with 228 on the clock. Ah, how about old do uh, Doobie down there scrapping for that basketball, smacked it down, and it goes right off of those size 18s of Coburn's and out of bounds. What size did you wear when you played? About 16. 16? Yeah, Coburn, I, I said 18. They look like they're closer to 20 to me, but I want to be kind since I don't oh, know that's for sure. Floating Brown, good! Oh, uh, what can Brown do for you? Really needed to bucket that time down the floor. A little dribble along the baseline. Tight rope in that baseline. Floats it right up over the top of the defense. Sumo leaves it for Felice. It's not, it's not bad considering he got a boating accident. Haven't played in 600 games, but wow, that's another one. Right to the bucket. They got to they gotta roll up that red carpet. Or at least leave it down at this floor for the second half. Don't send it to the, bring it with them to the other end. Brown. Off of the Illini, no foul. Felice with 10. I thought Brown got hit across the forearm there, the way he lost that basketball. Officials are saying he got they got all ball. Griffin checks out. Kipper Nichols in for the Illini. Griffin with some quality minutes there, opening half for Illinois. Jenkins leaves for Brown. Yeah, so they got him back to that little two-three zone. And see how the Lopes feel about attacking it this time. Under a minute and a half. Bryant. Bryant cuts in, loses the ball. Pocket picked. Felice. Nichols back to Felice. Felice wants three. Off the rim, loose ball. Brown. Coburn seemed to me like he didn't call for that ball. He had a smaller player on Jenkins out there. I mean, he, he didn't call for that ball like he really wanted. It. Almost like he's out of gas and just trying to get through and finish the half to get the, to the locker room. Brown for three! Four-point game, 45 seconds to go. I like this Lopes team a lot better than I like the one on Tuesday night. They giving the fans something to cheer about here in the opening half. Lopes fans. Getting on their feet. Coburn, Jenkins got a hand on it. Kick back out, down low. Felice underneath.
underneath the bucket, off the glass and in. Oh, I was going to say, a chance for the loaf to play for the last shot. He had an injured player down. Oh, he's not injured, but uh, Dan Marley wants to draw off this last play. Look at this one one more time by Carlos Johnson. Just a little penetration and good recognition of that finding his teammate in that corner three. I love that slow motion, y'all. That was a beautiful thing of you That shot had a nice arc to it. Shoot it high and let it fall softly through the basket. 23.6 seconds on the clock. Kate Longworth will be joined by the head coach of the Lopes, Dan Marley, at the conclusion of this half. Also be joined by Malcolm in the middle, Frankie Muniz. Oh, Malcolm in the middle's here tonight? Yep. I like that dude. Uh, where is he at? There he is. Look at his sport. Oh, Chiefs yeah, he even brought here and represent. Our old Frankie Nunez. Nunez, rather not Nunez, Nunez. Yeah. Yeah, he was the middle kid. He, there was uh, two older brothers, uh, and then he was that middle kid. So four middle <laughs> Malcolm kid, in the right? middle, yeah. Dysfunctional family. He was, like, really smart. He was, like, the really smart one in the family and a bunch of, uh, a bunch of meatheads. Yeah. <laughs> Jamming to the band. I like that. All right. For that interview. Stats and highlights coming up as well. It doesn't seem like that show was that long ago. That's like back, what did you say, 2000? Did that show running? Like, yeah. I don't know. The years seem to fly by the older I get. This show's been off the air. Wasn't he a kid on that show? Yes, <laughs> right. all grown up, yeah. 16, 15, Brown waiting. And by. Gasumu, nine seconds, better move, moves right. Brown driving, big right hand, doesn't go, whistle called though. Foul called on the lineup. Yeah, I like that, nice pick by Carlos Johnson, he goes hard to the basket, doesn't get the bucket, but Biden and Illini are, are in the double penalty, so or I should, maybe I should say the Lopes are in the double bonus, so he's gonna shoot two free throws. Chance to cut this thing to 37 and get a stop. Ethan Spry is going to come in. I don't want to get any fouls. Put Ethan in there. Banks and bodies. There's a, a rebound. Ethan, the 6'8 freshman from Scottsdale. Four point five seconds on the clock. It's an important half for the Lopes. Uh, you know, I, I know they're trailing by six, but this was an important half from the standpoint of laid an egg on Tuesday night against an inferior opponent. How is this team going to respond? I, I know Coach Marley and his staff is going to prepare them the best they can, get him ready for this game. But once they get out of the live fire, they were getting smacked around in the middle a little bit. You kind of wondered, oh no, are we going to see this thing go from 6.7 points to double digits? And the Lopes didn't let that happen. They continue to fight in this half, and now Brown's got a chance to slip this lead down to five. Coach Underwood wasn't happy even in with the overtime loss. He thought they were outplayed by Nichols State. He's looking for his team to rebound. Game. Keep the ball in front of you. Don't let him get it all the way to the rack. Blaze drives. Up high. Not there at the buzzer. 41-37. The Illini on top at the half. Yeah, GCU did a good job. Shot 30% two nights ago. They shoot 47% here in this first half. Much Let's better. Send it down to Kay Longworth with Dan Marley. All right, thank you guys. Well, Coach, some of those problem areas we addressed after Davenport lost. It seemed like the team today came out and established some urgency in the first half. What stands out to you from the look to play? Uh, I think we're really good defensively. Offensive rebounds are hurting. They're really big, so we got a gang rebound, all five guys. And then our transition defense, even off of makes, they came down and scored. So I thought our defense is good. Offensive rebounds and transition defense. Yeah, you got out rebound right now, 25-11. So how do you focus on that? And what was the game plan for the team? Knowing if you don't have size, you can go out there and got a gang rebound. Our guards got to get in and take up the loose balls. I mean, Ollie's got three fouls. Javon's got three fouls. So they're battling, but the guards got to get in there, scrap and get the loose balls. 
All right, thank you very much. Coach Barley addressing the play of his team right now, fighting in line eye with a 41-37 lead over GCU. But it is a competitive match inside GCU Arena. We'll continue to break it down right here on Fox 10 Extra as our low halftime show continues right after this. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. November is known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales. Sanderson Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new expedition with 0% financing for 72 months, plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanderson Ford. Welcome back here to the Lopes pregame, or rather halftime show, as we are breaking down the action here. Right now, the score 41 37, GCU trailing, but just by a little. I'm Kate Longworth, welcoming you back here in the middle of our show during the middle of halftime, sitting here, middle of the court. You know where I'm going with this? That is right. I am joined by Frankie Muniz of the childhood star of Malcolm in the middle. What brings you out here to the GCU game? Oh man, I mean, I've been a, a, a Valley resident for the last 12 years. I've, I've just heard of the crazy atmosphere here. I had to come check it out and it really is. I mean, I've been to a lot of in, insane events and uh, types of games and there's nothing like this. I mean, this is pretty cool. So uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and I'm definitely a, a GCU fan now. I've, I've converted already. You're, you're looking good sporting the hat and obviously you are an athlete and a competitor sports fan yourself from car racing to dancing with the stars. You go to a lot of games as you reference. Yep. What is it like as an athlete or a competitor when you have the fans like this on your side? How does that change your game? Oh man, I you know it, it makes you feel good. You know, like it, it pumps you up. You know, also to, to come into an environment like as the visiting team, this would be intimidating. You know, like I don't know if they're used to seeing this, but I wouldn't be. You know, so uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and you know the fans they're going crazy. They love it, and I'm uh, I'm happy to be here, a part of it. Fans have an impact on this game, but someone who had an impact on so many childhood lives, of course, you, as you grew up on TV screens across America, what was it like for you to be a part of Malcolm in the Middle? Oh, man, uh, really a dream come true. It's one of those things when you're in it, you know, I was also a kid, you know, you, you it's just your life. But now stepping back from it, being away from it for as long as I have, I, I feel so grateful for what I got to experience. And, you know, the fact that the show ended 15 years ago or so, and. I can come here and people still care. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun. I don't know. It's a pretty, I'm, I consider myself extremely lucky and um, I had a great time for sure. Yeah, you're still definitely recognized and I think people do hold a spot in their heart for that show. But you've gone on and done great things with your career. Talk to me specifically about what you and your wife Paige are involved with in Old Town Scottsdale. Yeah, we actually own a uh, an olive oil and balsamic vinegar store called Outrageous Olive Oils and Vinegars. We started together and we love it. Um, it's a lot of a lot of work, but uh, I love being involved in business in business, especially in this community. So uh, we're having a good time. So you brought some olive oil for tastings, right? Oh, of course. I, I got it in my pocket. All right, that's good because we're heading to a commercial break, so I can uh, take care of that. And I know you're a genius, or at least you played one on TV. So I've got to ask you, GCU has a chance in this game. What do you think? I, I mean, it's it's close. Four points. You know, I feel like they're playing really well. So I'm uh, I'm rooting. We're we're all rooting hard for them. So we got it. Malcolm in the middle says the Wolves can do it. Well, we think it can happen. All right, we'll be back with more here on Fox 10 Extra as Barry and Scott break down the halftime stat scores and much, much more. We'll be right back.
Courtney, and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers and we're USAA members for life. USAA, get your insurance quote today. Back in Phoenix at GCU Arena where the Lopes trail the Illini 41 to 37 at the half. Very Vitale, Scott Williams back with you. So glad you could join us here from Phoenix. Uh, it was an 11 point lead at one point for the Illini and the Lopes uh, narrowed it down to four at the half. Not a bad opening half for both teams. You know, not a bad opening half for the Lopes. I mean, they battled. Uh, more, most importantly, that's what I saw out of this team. A lot more energy and effort. That will make this coaching staff very extremely happy. Got to do a better job chewing glass. Uh, they're down getting out rebounded 25 to 15. Yeah. So we got to pick that up. Can't let that margin increase. And whenever uh, Kofi Coburn is on the court, it is a tall order. I like that kid. 290 pounds of raw muscle out there, just flexing it down low. <laughs> Having himself a great first half. He's got 14 points, using his big body around the basket real well. He's pulled down seven rebounds. I love the high handoff and three boards on the offensive side. And Lever on the other side, he's trying to do a nice job mixing up the dribble drive and the step back, pick and pop for the three-point shots. He's going to have to be careful. He's got those three personal fouls, but need my big fella get on the glass. No rebounds in that first half. He should never go a half without getting a care of. That was your SRP highlights, delivering water and power. Now your first half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. 43% for the Illini, 47 for the Lopes. Three-point field goals, the rebounding margin you already mentioned, uh, sizable, 10 Ten more for the Illini. Yeah, the points in the paint is that last big one on there, and that's where uh, GCU's got to pick it up a little bit. Can't let those guys keep driving that ball to the basket unimpeded. 24 to 14 disadvantage. So we'll keep an eye on those uh, personal fouls as well for Lever and Blackshear. Stay with us. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GCU Arena. The Lopes trailing the Illini by four. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online.
at GCU Arena right now. The score 41 37 Illinois over GCU. And our first half leading scores are brought to you by Streets of New York Pizza. Leading the way for the Fighting Illini. Homer with 14 points to his name. Meanwhile, for GCU, Laver and Brown both checking in with 10 points. Kate Longworth courtside here, and I'm joined by a couple of folks who know a little about basketball. The greats, Eddie Johnson and Ann Myers Drysdale. First of all, they're both sons and TV analysts, and a lot of times you guys aren't at the same place at the same time. So it's great to have you out here. I know you're rooting for your alma mater, but probably also excited to see the Lopes succeed, right? It's always great to come here. This is the most unbelievable environment I've ever seen. And I really miss basketball playing when I'm here because I can envision myself in this environment. And I'm sure Ann feels the same way. Yeah, I mean, obviously you had a prolific career at UCLA, but when you step in this building, are you feeling what that must be going through the athletes' minds with this atmosphere? Well, you walk in here, and obviously we're here to support Dan, there's no question, and my son works here too, DJ. But like Eddie said, you walk in here, you feel like you're back in college again. And just the fans and the music, you just you want it. You're so hyped up. You want to get out there and, and do something. And uh, so I, I love coming here. As fans and friends, of course, of both Dan Marley and Jerry Colangelo, how have you seen them put their mark on this program here, at GC? It, it's been unbelievable what Jerry has done overall in the Valley. And then hiring Dan was the best thing. Uh, Dan's enthusiasm and passion uh, is just infectious for this basketball team and these fans. And sooner or later, they're going to get this thing done. I truly believe it. Because if you're get being recruited here, how can you not be excited about wanting to join the school? So uh, Dan is going to hit his mark sooner or later. Yeah, it's a young team this year. Obviously, he's got to change his coaching a little bit. He's got to teach a little bit more. But, you know, Jerry Colangelo and, and President Brian Mueller have done a terrific job. And they did, the college just keeps expanding. It gets bigger and bigger. And how do you not want to come here? And how do you not believe in GCU when you see the star power that these basketball games bring out? Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll also see you on Suns broadcast. But in the meantime, we'll be back with more GCU basketball right after this. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Part of my motivation of becoming a doctoral learner was so I could immediately start using the information that I was learning in the courses as a tennis coach here for my student athletes. I think that it set a good example for those around me to know that things can be accomplished. My name is Greg Prudholm and I just defended my dissertation to earn a degree in performance psychology. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Curiosity fuels you, so when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GCU Arena in Phoenix, a sold-out crowd to see the Lopes and the Illini battle it out, a four-point lead for Illinois. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longwood. So glad you could tune in tonight. We welcome those watching from the Champaign and Springfield Decatur area on WCIX TV, Channel 49. Appreciate the Illini and this back end of a home and home that started two years ago. A tight game up there. Underwood in his third season at Illinois. Running around that program. He's done it before. One season at Oklahoma State. Also at Stephen F. Austin leading the Lumberjacks to the tourney in all three of his seasons there. Yeah, 136 and 66 record. I had to look up Coach Underwood. He's doing a fantastic job with 68% of his games and building this program the right way. I better get after his team at half, though. 
Well, Lopes got to be careful here. Cannot afford for Laver or Blackshear Jr. to get another foul here early in this second half. Jenkins cutting in. Left hand not going to fall. Nishanashvili leaves it. Up to Frazier. Frazier moves right. Stops, comes back to his left in the paint. Floater up top, drops. Yeah, Blackshear Jr., they went right at him. They realize he's got three fouls, and he's a big part of why this Lopes team is hanging around. They drew up the first place, and you just take that young fellow and point, take him right to the basket, see if we can get a quick fourth one on him. Shots into Jenkins. Labor. Labor's going to try for three. Not there. Police brings it up. Down to Coburn. Coburn puts it down low. Yeah, Jenkins did a nice job tying him up. Big fellow's gonna learn. You put that ball down around your waist or um, your, your thigh area, that's where those guys have it now that your, your advantage of your height and your strength goes away the further down that ball goes. And they were able to tie him up. Session arrow over with the fight in the line nine. Came back. Right hand, who put a harm for Vishanishvili? Yeah, Vishanishvili is fantastic at using both hands around the basket. He had a nice little drive down the left side of the lane and threw the left hook in. And this time he goes, wheels to his right side, throws the right hand hook in. Lead is now eight quickly after leading by four at the half. They've come out on fire. Bishanishvili at the line. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. Lopes got to get a bucket here. Back here. Labor. Near side. Leaves it there for Brown. Brown cuts in. Up high. Floater and good. Lopes fans can take a seat. I like that one. Just a little dribble exchange there off of that left wing. Brown, who had 10 points in that first half, gets two more. Oh, that made it look easy. Yeah, big fellas just imposing his will down low, realizing that Laver can offer little resistance. Open look, Blackshear. Too heavy, big rebound. Brown is able to get there. Brown takes it. Right hand, not there. No yep. foul. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him reset the defense. I know Brown's trying to be aggressive. I keep seeing these guys, you know, be aggressive, but that one there wasn't wasn't his opportunity. Look at Blackshear with the steal on the baseline. Picked it off as Bishanishvili tried to feed Coburn. What we didn't want happen happened. Labor gets called for the charge. Fourth personal foul. Look at That's this one more of a time. That's right over the top. And again, bringing that ball down where the little fellas live. And then right here, just stepping in there. Not a whole lot of contact, just enough to sell it to the officials. Tough break for Labor as he's trying to make a move with his back to the basket. Over and hobbled as he made his way back to the bench. He's at the end of the bench. Down nine right now, and your big fella just went out. I don't know how long, if this deficit gets larger, that you can leave him on the bench. Got a nice first half working, except for the foul trouble. If this thing goes to 15 or more, you got to get him back in there regardless, so you lose chance of losing this basketball game before you get him back in the game. And then hit a big three-point shot there to make a 10 to 2 run and counting. Oh, pro in the game. Johnson for three, that's off the mark. Easy rebound for the Illini. Don't lose your composure doing things that you're not in your best interest right now. Quick three with no ball moving, no chance for an offensive board. I know Collins Johnson with just two points in the first half wants to try to get gone, but that's not the way to do it. Turnover. Wants an explanation. Yeah, I love to watch these coaches. I love when we highlight it like that. Working those officials, just giving it to whoever is within your shot. Goes down and pulls up a fresh player to get back in that basketball game. Underwood went to the end of the bench to check on the status of Coburn, who came out a little limpy. They're testing that out. Oh, 
wonder if he's cramping up. I know he's giving him a bottle of water and he's kind of yeah. rubbing out his, his lower part of his body Looks there. Like you're right. You know, these guys who played 37 minutes a few nights ago, another turnover by the Lokes. He could just be dehydrated. They're trying to pump some fluids in him. Problem is, you start drinking now, it's too late. I mean, you got to start doing that. If you're young players out there, you got a competition coming up, a couple competitions over a few days. You got to start drinking that water well before you start playing. Police, near side, turns the corner, kicked back out. Pulled down by Frazier in the corner. Three seconds in that painted area. Camping out down there. Hamlin. Coburn back at the scores table. Blackshear. Peels back out. Okpo. Heavy rebound to line on. Look at Blackshear though. He, he does such a good job of dribbling that basketball. I keep harping on it below the free throw line. He kicks it back out. He's getting wide open teammates. Trying to hit it off. Lopes, but it ricocheted off of uh, Felice. There's one more time that drive along the baseline. I thought maybe he had dribbled it out oh, right he there, did. but he, he throws it off one of the purple jerseys. But look, goes back. And it hits him. He couldn't get out of the way in time. He knows it. That's funny. Four turnovers this half for the Illini. And a bucket. What a it. nice job by Blackshear just attacking the feet of the big man. Able to squirt by. He did that layup without even putting his left hand back on the ball. Just trying to save some time so he could get it off that glass in case Coburn was trying to come get it. It would have been a goaltending. Pass Colbert out of bounds. The lead is 10. The Illini led by 11 at one point in the opening half. 15-59 to go second half. Keep it right here. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. GCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Beautiful night on the GCU campus in Phoenix. The Lopes trail the Illini by 10. Tick under 16 to go. And uh, quite the celebrity turnout. One gentleman that might be wearing both colors here a little bit tonight is one Jerry Colangelo. Illinois guard, one belt? time keen team captain, and in their Hall of Fame from 59 to 62, Jerry Colangelo. Look at sharp. Look at that one. That is a belt. God, that could inflict some harm. Uh, I like I love the, I love the those are classic Chuck Taylors right there, baby. Love it. I play semi-pro ball and work for the Chicago Bulls. Bring in that team. There he is. See the icon. JC. Walked in with him today. I said, JC, we pulled for him. He said, come on, Scott, you know what we pulled for him. Oh, well, yeah. Kind of left it out there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm assuming he got it with the color of that blazer. Yeah. I think I know where his heart lies. The namesake of the Colangelo College said, of Business here at GCU. Illinois was then, GCU was now. Great memories. Rhymes gives it up. The Illini. 
That's a high school basketball play right there by J.J. Ryan. He's better than that. I expect him to make up for that mistake. Five for five this half for the Illini. Devontae Williams with that. Breakaway bucket. Oh, there we go. I, I said I expected him to make up for that poor effort there on the offensive end. And the same trip, next trip down the floor, hard drive to the basket and draws a foul. Coburn's got two. Got a hand on it. Loose ball. Carlos. Doesn't go. Tried to go over Coburn. Yeah, that's, like running into, that's like going over a wall. Kicked out. Griffin. Now that's it's for him. Yeah, it's 15 now with 15 to go. I don't know how much longer, after watching the last couple offensive possessions, I don't know how much longer you can leave Labor on the bench. Yep. Step back, rides. Had the open look, doesn't drop. Quickly, in the corner, uncontested, not gonna go. Jenkins gonna check in for Okpo. For the Lopes. 21 on the shot clock. I right, can now score 15 to 4 here in this second hand. Yeah, right. Lopes just 2 of 10 from the field, yeah. 6 of 7 for the line. In, in, in the off, as bad as the offensive half side has been, the defensive side has been equally as bad. They, they got to do a better job closing down those three point shooters, identifying their top three point shooters and running them off that line while still taking away the inside for the dribble drop. Police and Lassima to play catch. Police. Trying to peel around Brown. He shot his really Left hand, short. Chickens doing the job defensively. Up to Brown. 14 and a half to go. Brown, Jenkins, Jenkins, left drives. Hoping a hard. It's not hard. This basketball is an easy game. It's beautiful when guys attack that basket. Left hander always kind of fools someone off the dribble. Goes in there, throws that big right shoulder right into the defender, doesn't shy away from the contact, has the concentration, the fortitude to finish. I always thought it was hard. Oh, oh. But you say it's easy? It's an easy game when you play to your strengths. You try to do things that you're not capable of doing, not lessening. then it becomes a very difficult game if five guys aren't playing together. Basimu, on by Carlos Johnson. Leaves for Frazier. Junior from Wellington, Florida. Cuts in. Doesn't go. Blocks here with a rebound. Freshman brings it up. A little guy he does a good job cleaning the glass. Look at him go, stop, pop, not there, all that work. Oh, boy, I tell you what, that would have been great. Rebound coast to coast with the finish. Police back to Frazier. Frazier, far side, kick back. Police leaves it there. Basumu. Rings around. Oh, the swoop. Wow. Well, I see why this guy, all the NBA scouts are salivating over this guy. That was something to behold right there. Wood and Maysmith. Doozy. Lute Olsen. Wow, he's on every list. Yeah, blue ribbon, all American. <laughs> you name it. Jenkins battling down on the floor. And ball, possession arrow. GCU. Just one more time. It's so good. We got to take a look at this again. Highlight the super coming right into your living room. Beautiful play. Hangs in the air. Waits for the defense, the taller player, to come back to the ground. Goofy footed, jumping off the wrong foot. Still got the ball to the bucket. Rhymes checks out for the GCU. Okpo in for him. Williams, uh, Johnson, into Blackshear Jr. 
You really want the Lopes to pick it up because it, this is a game, and there was four points at the break. Lopes aren't just going to be satisfied with some sort of a moral victory tonight for one half of basketball. They want to play a good 40 minutes tonight. Brown from the corner. Good! Oh, I'll tell you what, a stop at a couple more of those. Get this crowd going crazy. Oh, but that's the counter. Yeah, they lost him in the corner. They didn't do a good job recognizing the shooter down there in that far left corner and gave him too much time to get a clean look at the basket. Oh, the black shirt. Junior with a tricky move. Path, not going to happen. Rounds three for three from the arc for the Lopes. 15 points. At 26 in the exhibition opener. Junior's got a nice Carlos quick Johnson. step off the dribble drive. It's Carlos Johnson's third foul. I mean, he just wouldn't left the time before, but you got to give his kid a little bit more space because he is so fast with that ball going from a start to uh, from a stop to a start. Inbound right in front of the Illini bench. Tyler Underwood, the coach of Sun on the floor. Son of a coach. Guys are always smart basketball players, aren't they? Yep. It's like they grow up. <laughs> it's a constant right? chalk talk every time at the dinner table. These are long always car rides home. Nuggets. Yeah, long car rides home after a win or a loss. Yeah, right? Telling you what you did right <laughs> and what you did wrong. <laughs> I believe he's getting his master's degree. Ooh, Blackshear got a hand on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Baxter is 5'10", 170, 155 pounds going up against someone that's 290 pounds. 61-47, Brown with 15 points in the game, three for three from the yard. Money washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want a lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCU helps you stay focused on staying purpose driven. They give you the tools to find what your purpose truly is. Once I got out here, I kind of had an identity crisis. Walking around campus, I saw a flyer for something called Java Jams. When I first walked onto that stage, my heart was pounding, but I was able to find myself as an artist. My name is Joseph, and I earned my Bachelor's of Arts degree at GCU. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. Right now, Illinois on top, GCU 61-47 with just under 12 to go here in the game. Kate Longworth, welcome you back to the action here on a who's who at night here at GCU Arena. A lot of famous folks checking in, and right now I'm joined by Representative Greg Stanton. Thanks so much for joining us. And I know you came out here to the GCU game with your family. What's the experience been like so far tonight? Loud. It's loud right now. I can barely hear you. My, my family loves basketball. We love coming to GCU basketball. It's literally the best college basketball atmosphere in the entire country. They're playing one heck of a good game against one of the better teams in the entire country. So the game is great, but the atmosphere is just so much fun and very family friendly. I love it. And obviously you served as the mayor for Phoenix for several years. What impact have you seen GCU have on this community? Well, not only was I the mayor, I grew up in this neighborhood not that far from here. GCU has transformed this neighborhood in such positive ways. I love the ethic of the students at the university to not just do good in the classroom, but then outside the classroom, get active in the community, tutor the young high school students from the area, and make sure that they have the most positive future that they can. They've really transformed West Phoenix in a very positive way. I love it. You have such a great pride here in Arizona. What does it mean to you, and why is it important for you to represent the state? Well, we're the best state in the United States of America, and Arizona is changing in mean, so many positive ways. Our economy is changing. Our population is, uh, is changing. And I want to represent the very positive things that are happening in our community. I get to brag about Arizona in Washington, and that's great. All right, thank you so much for joining us. And now the Lopes looking for something to brag about. Turn around, swatted goaltending. 
you gotta like that. That's where the Lopes were at their best. Drayton Havoc on the defense, getting the turnover, and then sprinting to the other end. Nice bounce pass by Carlos Johnson to Brown, who finishes at the basket. 17 points, five boards, six of eight from the field, Brown. Oh, Jenkins saw that play developing, and he jumped in that passing lane, just wasn't able to corral it, and slopped out of bounds off his hands. All right, I like the energy coming out of that yeah. time out there. Lopes seem like they're trying to pick it up here in the south end of the floor. Griffin. Underwood. Back to Griffin. Quick ball movement. Delonte Williams. Peoria, Illinois native. Police. Looking to turn the corner. Floater short. Rebound underneath. Guess who? Coburn. Down, uh, Coburn down there doing a nice job again on that uh, offensive glass. Yeah, plus 16, make plus 17 on the, on the rebounds right now as the Illinois fighting Illini. And the Lopes just have not had an answer and had to keep some of those big bodies off of that offensive glass. Coburn's numbers 16 points, nine, was it nine boards? He's on his way to another double-double here in his second game of the season. He's going to be on some watch lists. Well, he keeps playing. There is a number nine rival ranked center in the nation. Nice pickup by Coach Underwood. And 20 in county. Blackshear brings it up. On by Dosumu. Leaves for Jenkins. Jenkins peels. Kicks back out. Opo with a floater. Way off the mark. I thought someone got just enough of that ball on Opo's way up. He is able to readjust in midair, but it threw his shot off. And left it up to the left side. But I like the uh, Opo. He, he's going to have to learn to not just get to below the free throw line, but try to get to the rim. Too much contact underneath by Blackshear. That's going to be his four. Oh, boy. Coach Marley's giving it oh, <laughs> officially. He doesn't like that call one bit. It's something about the same foul down here on the other end. I can read his thoughts properly. Might be dangerous. Gober. Bishanishvili. Osumu peeling out. Police. Police. Up high off the glass. Big rebound on the floor. Coburn's a whistle. Coburn's a, a problem down there. He did just enough on that rebound to keep it alive for one of his teammates to get it. And okay, look who's checking back into this game. Got Lever, Lever coming back in his basketball game. Here we go. Down by 13. Let's see if they can turn this thing around and make a little 7-0 or 9-2 run. Get back in this. A lot of bodies down there. You got one somewhere around the nose eye area. <laughs> That'll tear you up. Make it a little hard to see it when you have to go to the free throw line and shoot the free throws. Illinois with 14 offensive rebounds. GCU with 19 total rebounds. Now look at this, 38 to 19, like you said, on the, on the glass there. 53 a game ago against Nichols State, they had a plus 30 rebound. Yeah, they're, they're going to be, they're going to They are going to be fun to watch. You know, I know you talk about some of those teams in the, the Big Ten, Michigan State, and, you know, number one coming into this week, and it's going to be interesting, you know, they, Sometimes you go seven and twelve. There'll be a number of teams that'll take you for granted the next season. When they get a look at this Illinois team on tape, they won't be taking them for granted anymore. They'll be ready to play against this squad because they're going to have a advantage on a lot on the glass on a lot of teams that they play. Officials. Okay, so. We have to substitute a free throw shooter for yep. the injured player. And they That's asked Dan Marley who they who they want to bring off the bench to shoot these free throws. One of three from the uh, the uh, 
charity stripe. A little saline solution. Pretty good there. Bishan Ashvili said, yeah, thanks a lot for picking me. Yeah, free two freebies. Yeah. I'll be ready to go again if you need me. Blackshear. Labor. Turning. Shoots. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that? It's like, well, I just got back in the game. I really don't want to shoot the first time I touched it. I'll try to dribble a handoff. That's not available. Nobody opened to pass it to. Nobody's guarding me, so I guess I should shoot the ball, and he knocks it down. Bishan is feeling. Trying to feed it down to Coburn. Oh, no, that's oh, going to be five. Five. That's going to be five. Hey, Coburn's a problem down there. I thought they were going to get three-second violation underneath, but fortunately got Labor pushing down there with the lower body on Coburn, and he's going to have to come out of this basketball game. It'll be a tall task now to climb back into the game against the Illini. Both teams went back to their respective benches. And I think I know when you get some time to sub out a player that's fouled out of the game. You normally don't see both players go down there to the benches, but Labor oh, wow. down there pushing with his lower part of his body. And fortunately, he wasn't able to track the ball. I think Coburn does just enough wow. good job of keeping that contact on him and he whistled him for the foul. So what I was saying in the first half, they were letting him play. Now here in the second half, it seems like they've tightened it up and they're calling, they're calling more whistles and a little tough for these players to adjust. It's a fun game. Obviously, the Illini were on top. But love it when they, uh, they let them play. Coburn's a one-on-one -on -one situation. You know Coburn's not a very good three-point shooter, so he makes sure you got to block out here and get this ball. And now he's been doing a good job on the glass. Oh, wouldn't you know it? He knocks in the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Good-looking freshman. I'm impressed. No joke. Jenkins in for labor. Boxer's on the floor with four. Oh, my. Yeah, Coburn. Coburn wanted that missed yeah. free throw back so bad he went right over the back of two Lopes players. That's a freshman mistake, but you got to like the effort. And that's what I was saying. It, you got to box out, get that ball clean the first time now. If you can get it clean the first time, you may have an opportunity to go down and try to score before these big bodies can set themselves defensively. Third on Coburn. Grimes, Jenkins looks for three. Good! Jenkins keeps firing away from the outside. He gets, he's gotten a couple to go here. One, one in the first half, and now one here in the second half from behind the arc. And it's, it's just an 11-point game. Chance for the stop to get it back to single digits. Again, moving. Chewing them up with those. Moving screen. Yeah, I don't know exactly what I don't know exactly what what happened on that one. The officials say that work, that's as they sure. were coming off the screen, that uh, two other GCU players motioned with a forearm. I didn't see that. Again, it's back to the line for one and one. One of the things the Lopes did so good in that game against it, um, Davenport University was they didn't they stayed out of the foul situation. They, didn't get their fourth foul in that basketball game till late in the first half. But here in the second half, they have been racking up these fouls. They don't want to get away from the double penalty there and be sitting in the line eye and shoot two free throws the rest of the game. Still got 9.37 to play. Coburn sits down. Kipper Nichols in. Wings out. Johnson leaves for Blackshear. He's left. Johnson puts it on the floor, guys. Okay, now the officials have boxed themselves in. Yep. Any contact following a player with the basketball is going to be a foul. Because if they call it on one end, the, official, the coaching staff is riding the officials so hard, you're going to have to call it on the other end. 
It's going to be a three-hour basketball game before we get out of here where this whistles are blowing. Brown. We got a tip on that. Johnson. Drives baseline. Rhines kicks back out. Blackshear over to Johnson. Open look for three. Oh, that looked good the whole way. It was the perfect angle for us upstairs here to follow and track that basketball to the hole. I thought for sure it was going down. Frazier, Felice, Vishanishvili. Vishanishvili trying to separate himself from Jenkins. Left hand short. Rebound, J.J. Ryan. Good job there defensively. And that's run. Brown takes a run for it. Deshaun is really called for the foul. That's GCU basketball at its top. Turnovers and stops, getting out and transition. This is a big team. And if you can take the fight to them before they have a chance to lock in and wall up the middle, you're going to be most successful. Saw Blackshear Jr. do it a time before, just a little strong with a floater in here. Now Brown, with a little bit more strength, goes in there and takes some contact. Rishonis Vila is going to check out with four personal fouls. Coburn will take his place. Well, one thing we saw in that Davenport game when the Lopes were behind and really needed to try to make a run, they went to a full court press. Really got some two forced some turnovers, got some easy buckets inside. It'll be interesting tonight if Coach Marley here with this next 846 to play doesn't say, hey, let's slap a full court press on them after one of these free throws, see how they handle. Demonte Williams. That eye injury got treated on the bench. Back in for Andres Felice. Back in, Brown. Not going to happen. Oh. Brown's got 18. 840 and counting. Monte Williams, far side. Ooh, put it down on the floor to Griffin. Knocked out. Lopes ball. Brown applauding himself. Yeah, ball pressure. Hey, when you get in there and make guys a little uncomfortable and they can't just watch the players cut through and to play to develop. He's just out there, a little careless with the basketball, and he slaps it right out of his hands. Black shirt backs up. Moves left. Looks right. JJ drives. Off balance hoop and a harm! That was wonderful. Nice job. Sets the screen. Black shirt strings it out to the left, creating an opportunity for JJ to catch this basketball here. Nobody picks him up. So he just goes right to the front of the basket with it, gets the contact and the foul. I love this one right here. That's right over Coburn. Three point play, JJ Ryan with five on the left. Yeah. More ball pressure here in this half court. See if he can't get another turnover by this team in white. You know, it, it's good because the GCU team, they, they're used to playing from behind, I hate to say, but they're not getting, they're not stopped their fight. They're continuing to fight. 4-15 and counting for the Illini without a field goal. Frazier out, Gosumu in. Underneath, Coburn. Brown was just a little bit shy of being outside that restricted area. Coburn got that ball, didn't take it down, finished quickly above the basket, chance for three-point play. Look at this one more time. Sees his big fellow rolling down the lane. See Brown there, just his heels, just his heels inside that painted area there on the restricted area, and Coburn not lays it in there. It's a dangerous spot. Right, a seven-foot, 290-pound Kofi Coburn. He's not a fat 290. No, he's not. <laughs> he's a He's, He's a like lead a muscular tonight. Yeah. He could definitely, he definitely could play some tight end, oh, couldn't he? Oh, for sure. Well, come across Just the throw it up. Just throw it target. Up. That's an easy first down for any quarterback. JJ. JJ Rhymes has discovered something there. Driving, Going to the being basketball. aggressive. 68 58 the score. 7.47 on the clock. Larry Vitell, Scott Williams here from GC Arena in Phoenix. Well, Laver's out. You think maybe that's the time for the complete knockout blow, but they respond. 
J.J. Runs stepping up, and also uh, Isaiah Brown. I, I, I just like this team. I, I think I'm really going to enjoy this season because they're feisty. Yeah. They're, 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 they're undermanned right now. They don't have Fisher. They don't have Frere. They don't have their big fellow labor, but they're continuing to battle. And the likes of Isaiah Brown, who had 26 points in that opener, has responded here tonight for GCU. Yeah, a little penetration and pitch is a wonderful play there. Blackshirt Jr. with a good understanding of how to play the game with, you know, with a couple of his teammates kicking it off to the big uh, the, the Brown. He had 10 points in that first half and knocking down some outside shots. And here in the second half, he's been driving that ball into that painted area, making some good things happen underneath. 18 points, five boards, six of eight from the field, three of three from the arc for Isaiah Brown, the uh, transfer from Northwestern University. How about J.J. Ryan stepping up, coming off of the bench for the Lopes? You gotta have some guys that can step up and come off your bench and provide a boost. You're either gonna do it defensively or you're gonna do it offensively. I got on him one time for being lackadaisical with the ball. It seems like he didn't hang his head. That's the one he responded on going hard to the rack and, you know, hooping a harm, had a three-point play the old-fashioned way. So, you know, that, that's what that's what you love to see, a guy not going to a shell after he turns the basketball over. He gets more feisty and continues to fight and made some good things happen for him. Coach Marley with a short bench with two guys out. He's got to figure out a way to keep these guys engaged. And sure enough, J.J. Rise is ready to play when his number was called. 7 of 15 from the arc of the Lopes. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Seven thousand four hundred ninety eight in attendance here at GC Arena tonight. That is the third all time highest. Yeah, call the fire marshal. My goodness at the arena. That's a lot of people. I know GCU they, the largest. What was the largest crowd last year? One hundred and two percent occupancy at any venue in college basketball. I mean, that's just amazing. They pack them in here. Phil getting calls this afternoon for tickets. Oh, it's like, dude, it's, yeah, it's right sold out. There's no more. There's no more to be had. See me on Saturday. <laughs> Lines up the line. Rings out. Williams leaves four Phillips. All right, ten point game. Seven forty to play. And you got to get stops and you got to get transition buckets. Police. Brown tight on him. Decides to move right. Tried to get a little help there from Nichols. Peels back out. Griffin, open look. Too much. Rebound underneath. Falls. Oh, he had oh, a bounce. Stepped out. Yeah, he was out of bounds and Demonte tried to Williams. get back in. <laughs> he could not get back in before the ball got into his hand. So good stop by the Lopes. Let's see what Coach Marley drew up here offensively during that timeout. Lopes need a bucket. Where are they going to go? Carlos Johnson in the corner. Blackshear moving in that direction. Peels back. Now to Jenkins. Back to Blackshear. Brown occupies that corner spot. JJ cuts in, puts it on the floor. Big right hand and in. JJ runs. Ah, JJ doing his darn thing out there. That's a beautiful drive from the left wing all the way through the middle, through traffic. To the right side of the basket with a big man step finishes with some skillful moves around the basket. Rebound. End of the Illini's hand. Oh, he tried to hit it off and that's successful off of Blackshear. He, wow. He spiked it off the littlest guy in the court. That's not fair, but look at Blackshear. I mean JJ Ryan's one more time. I love this right here. With a one big step to get clear of the defense and threw it up off the glass. We got ourselves an eight point game, Barry. Bishanashvili checks back in with four personal fouls. Elise on the floor. Dosumu. Frazier back in.
Bill's got some height. I wonder if he's got any skin. The big man. Right the floor now. Yeah. They gotta get a littler guy down and get closer to the to the wet spot. That guy's too <laughs> big. You know, hurt his back trying to get down there, a little wipe, wiping up that line. A little TV time though. Open look. Dosumu off the mark. Careful. Oh, Carlos Johnson can't put his hands around oh, it. Oh, squeeze that rock, big man. You had it in your hands. Carlos Johnson has not been his typical self no, tonight, offensively not. or defensively. Just three points. Police get some help. Oh, with the extra possession. That was a chance to cut it from eight to six and really put some pressure on as a line idea. Ball was right there. 14, Illini second chance points, just four for GCU. Blackshear, Johnson. Cuts in, pushes back out, Jenkins for three. Good! Well, that's good basketball. Carlos Johnson, they're playing him tough, and he didn't force anything. Just that little penetration opened up Jenkins, and Jenkins knocked down a couple now from long range. Felice. Devontae Williams back to Felice. Far side. Cuts in into. Short off to the front of the rim. Got to get the oh ball, my. fellas. These second chances are killing the ropes right now. They're going to put a body on them and got down inside, and then it's a 50 50 ball. Who is it goes off of that there? Uh, take a look at this one more, <laughs> one more Ooh, time. Where's the challenge Hilliard. flag? Johnson. Ooh. Inbound underway. Williams. Assuming steps back out. Approaching five minutes to go. Seven point line on lead. Devontae Williams cuts in. Spins off his leg. Off his leg. Is that J.J. Rhymes down there playing that good D one more time? Or is that Carlos Johnson? Is Carlos Johnson? Hey, look, that's J.J. down there. J.J. Rhymes has been battling here in the second half. Blackshear, near side. J.J. Rhymes plays catch with Javon. Looking to move on Bishan Isvili. Does so on his left. Foul. Bishan Isvili. If he's calling, he's got his fifth. Well, I know it's only really his third basketball game at the college level. But Javon Blackshear is really showing me that he understands how to play this basketball game. Hey, he's a 5'10", five, five, smallest guy on the floor, and he's constantly driving that ball in there amongst the trees. Not always finishing at the hoop, but uh, many times that he has gotten to the basket where he's drawn the foul. Question on whether that was his fifth or not. He's trying to feel he actually went over to the scores table himself. He is out. Most fans look at who yeah, the comes in off of the bench for him, and it's number 21. Oh, that Kofi Coburn yeah, kid that's, that's seven feet tall and pretty man, much is owning the glass. Yeah, the young man fouls out, and they got better. Uh, Coburn has been a monster tonight. And you hope he, you hope he's out of gas. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to cramping up issues yeah. earlier. And I gotta believe that that's what Coach Underwood was hoping that. Uh, that was going to be the night for Coburn for that, as you mentioned, the cramping up and everything. How about Blackshear, though? Yes. And he goes to the line and knocks two free throws in, and team, his team needs them. That's showing him fearless freshman. Fans are on their feet, at least the ones dressed in purple. Five-point lead by the Illini. Yeah. Approaching four and a half to go in Phoenix. The upset alert just popped up on the ESPN scroller. There, rebound, foul underneath. Coburn is fouled, it looks like, by Carlos Johnson. Yeah, you can't let that big guy get to the basket. I don't care if it takes two guys to block him out. I don't care if you got a face guard and try to push him out of there. Don't let him go to the basket. See, the, he just pushes out his way right to the front of the rim, and when that ball comes off, he's right there to snag it before anybody has a chance. 
Johnson with four personal fouls. Wow, oh, the decibel levels deafening in the arena. Rings out, gets louder. That'd be hard to shoot at that basket with all the two bugs and fat heads. Count. Yeah, Count Chocula back there. That would distract me at the line. Six of 12 from the line is Kofi Coburn. Drains that one. He'll check out. Yeah, you got to sub for him because GCU's got a smaller lineup out there and they want to be able to make sure that they can guard on that perimeter. Coburn has four personal fouls. Johnson trying to move in on Williams. Off the glass and in! Carlos Johnson, he's been nearly invisible on the offensive end tonight, but boy, was that a big basket. Four-point Illini lead. Four minutes and counting. Police drives off the glass and in. Got to do a better job of choking off the middle. Even if they got to mix it up and go to a zone defense for a possession. Got to show these Illini a different look down the stretch because they're just going too hard to the bucket. Near side, Brown. Hide by Frazier. Gives it to Johnson. Johnson backing in. Right hand high. Off the rim. Foul. Foul. Who looks like Ayo Dosumu is called for the personal foul. It's third. This place is going bananas, trying to inspire the home team against the Illini. Known for Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales, Sanders and Ford is changing Black Friday to Blue Friday to show our support for law enforcement. Purchase a new Expedition with 0% financing for 72 months, plus $7,000 cash back. Save 20% off on EcoSport, Escape, Edge, Fusion, and Fiesta. Similar savings on over 500 trucks in stock. Plus, get a ring doorbell to help protect your family and our community. Don't miss the Blue Friday sales event on now at Sanders and Ford. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Jerry Colangelo was honored the last time these two teams met in this home and home series back in December 2017 as he was inducted into the Illinois Hall of Fame after he captained the Fighting Illini with a great career there. He orchestrated this meeting between these two teams. No doubt a very exciting night for him tonight to watch his two teams go head to head. And just like you talked to him, Scott, I had a chance to talk to him about the meaning of this game. Obviously, fond memories for both teams, but when he used the word we, he said, notice I use that word when I'm talking about boys. Three thirty-one on the clock. Frankie's into it. Most dancers are into it. His havocs are into it. Woo, everybody's fired up. I mean, I, four, what, six point game? 331? Against a Power Five conference team? Big 10? Gotta love it. Just off the mark a bit. Carlos Johnson at the line. Two for Carlos, who has had an off night tonight. Just five points, four rebounds. Three twenty in county. Police push back. Frazier drives into the paint. Left hand and in off the glass. Pass Jenkins. 
Lina stepping up. Lachu. Coming back out top. Backs up. Motioning players goes to his right. Carlos gives it back to Blackshear. Now to Brown. Brown, Blackshear. Looking for a lane open. Back to Johnson. Johnson looking for three. That's going to be short. Rebound, Coburn. That oh. might have been. Yeah, the line I showed him that 2 3 zone on that trip down the floor, and they weren't able to get much penetration with that basketball below the free throw line with the pass or the dribble drive. Under two and a half to go. Taking his time. Police moves left, cuts in. Kicked out underneath, no doubt about it. Coburn puts it home. Yeah, he, he's out there struggling with those cramps the way he's yep. running. He's got a different gait, but he had enough to get up and finish that one home with a high right hand. Back to a 10 point lead. Look at that dribble drive. Ball goes below the free throw line. Everybody goes to the ball. Coburn goes to the rim. The GCU has been doing some damage of their own inside when Grimes has been able to get inside and do his little thing off the bat, the glass. Jenkins has got the outside shot. Finding the range from the outside. Carlos Johnson's been going to the hole, so just keep attacking that basket. Ten point game. Nick, plenty of time left in this one. Saw a shot of Michael Potter, the radio voice of the Lopes. He and Paul Coral. Alongside the Lopes Insider will be traveling with the Lopes to San Diego State Wednesday, 8 p.m. tip. 1580 to Fanatic, 99.3 FM or 95.9 FM. Lock it in. Yeah, I like listening to those guys on the radio. Oh, yeah. Post game with Dan Marley is always fun, too. Must listen to radio. Honor the GCU alum, longtime radio voice. What do they call him? Ferris. Buddy's calling Ferris. I've done some Bueller. podcast stuff with him. Bueller. Yeah, I think that Bueller. I think that's where they came from. Ferris Bueller. I was little the first time they got he oh, sure called him Ferris. I didn't know what they were talking about. They were like, yeah, that's Potter's nickname. Oh. As you mentioned, Coburn uh, battling those cramps. Mentioned after that bucket, getting yeah. back up the court. Yeah, he, he didn't get the rise he normally gets. You can see oh, him yeah. just kind of bouncing on that leg, and then he got even worse after GCU calls the timeout. They call the timeout. He he, he could barely move. Oh, Look at that. him, grimacing out there. That's hammies and quads are tightening up on him. They'll be loading him up with fluids before they take on the Wildcats down in Tucson. Yeah, what are they gonna do? Bust down there? They have to no, give him like an hour and a half. You got to give him two seats on that bus, don't you oh, think? Yeah, I would think naturally. 290 pounds, seven yeah. footer. Yeah, he needs more than one seat, I, especially I to stretch so. out those legs. And I wouldn't want to be the guy next to him if I didn't. He didn't get two seats. <laughs> the way he's played tonight, he, he deserves to sit wherever he wants yeah. to. Watch here. Trying to thread that needle, floater just doesn't go. Tap back by J.J. Rimes. Where would they be without J.J. Rimes? Great time for an offensive stick back. Got to extend the pressure now, Hal. Under two to go. Force a turnover. Taking his sweet time, Felice. Frazier. Look to Coburn, now back over to Felice. So carve off a little bit more time. Felice trying to move by Brown. Nine, eight on the shot clock, back to Frazier. Six. Shot away, not there, rebound, put back. Coburn's underneath, loose ball, here comes Brown. Brown's got Blackster, gives it to him underneath, waits patiently off the glass and in. Oh baby, six point game, buck 15 to play. Here goes that pressure by GCU, that full court pressure again. Gotta love how the effort has been 100% improved after their tough loss to Davenport. Timeout, Underwood. Nice job defensively that time. Didn't get the ball clean off the glass, but everybody scrapped for it. And in a way, they were going off and running. Brown sees Blackshear on that right wing, and what a crafty little move by this Gross. little freshman here. Little head and shoulder fake with the wait, ball, gets wait. the defender to jump, and when he's going down, Blackshear's going up and putting it to 
Second half turnover, GCU with three, the Illini with nine. This with Labor on the bench. Bishanishvili also followed out. Colbert on the floor with four. You know Underwood would prefer not to have him on the floor. Next telecast will be back here at GC Arena, Arkansas Pine Bluff on the 16th. Saturday, tip is at 6 p.m. on Saturdays. We'll have the pregame show with Kate Longworth at 5.30. Here we go, 102 to go. Both come back out in a man-to-man. Try to extend that pressure. See if they can't force something. And maybe hope the Illini will take an ill-advised shot here. Over on the bench now. Frazier. Nichols in for Cobra. Police. Looked right, went left, trying to weave around Blackshear. Felice trying to put it My dagger goodness. in and drained senior it. Senior leadership wow. right there. They put it in the senior's hands and he delivered. Long range shot off the mark. Ryan's trying to get a hand on it. Got to get up and press. You got a foul. Oh, so close there. Talk about a senior Felice. taking it, though, Felice. Wow. Yeah. He came up with a big, twisting, turning shot. Took the freshman down into the painted area there. And whoop, whoop. I love this one right whoop. here. That, that just, a, just a little 30 pounds advantage on him. Just put just enough back and shoulder on him to he liked it. bump off Blacks here to get the clean look. I gave these fighting Illini one heck of a fight tonight. Twenty for Feliz, five rebounds, four assists for the sen senior from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, Feliz is a solid player. Okay, he had twenty-three points versus Nichols to go along with eleven rebounds and eight of ten from the foul line in that one. And when his team needed a bucket here, the Lopes were threatening. He came up with a huge one. Illini fans watching on WCIX Channel 49, no doubt have to be pleased with this effort, this effort by the Illini, but probably would have preferred maybe a, a larger margin. Not easy to come in here. Yeah, no, it's a tough place, boy. This is one of the toughest venues. Eddie Johnson was talking about it yeah. in his interview with uh, Kate at halftime, along with. With, with, uh, Malcolm in the middle, <laughs> he's it's Frankie. so hard, so hard to hear in there. Frankie uh, Munez, and this is a tough, a tough building to play. And it takes a team a little while to settle themselves down. But one thing I will be say, like I said before, is I'm impressed with the size of this Illini team in the backcourt right. as well. And they got Gosumu and Fleece in the backcourt. You got a couple big guys in the inside that can that can really play and crash the glass. Back to 10 now. This one's out of reach, but really am impressed the way the Lopes bounce back it out after a loss to a team two squad. Oh, a long three attempt by Jenkins rings out. That'll be it. Foul. Johnson. That's his fifth for Johnson. He's going to have to take a seat. Oak Poe will come in off the bench. Well, the Illini will start 2-0 on the season. 18.6 on the clock. 10-point lead. Eight points for Dosumu. Yeah, he, he, Dosuku was funny. We got we kind of highlighted. We thought yeah. he would have a big score tonight, and he really didn't. But he didn't press. He realized the size advantage tonight was inside with the two bigs. Yeah. And uh, he said, I, "I'm I'm happy doing some of the other things that don't show up in the scoring column." Blackshear tried to kiss the glass. Not going to happen. 
That's going to be the deciding factor as the Illini come into GC Arena despite the valiant effort by the Lopes. Win it 83 to 71. And a 12 point margin, but it was a lot closer than that down the stretch. I, I like the way this Lopes team battled tonight. So stay with us. We'll have the post game press conference momentarily from head coach Dan Marley. We'll have our player of the game and much more before we wrap it up from Phoenix. 83 71, the Illini over the lumps. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GCU Arena, where the Lopes fall to the Illini, 83 to 71. Mary Vitell, Scott Williams came along with, with you in just a moment. We hope to be able to carry the uh, post-game press conference with Dan Marley. We'll keep an eye on our time commitments from, uh, from uh, Fox 10 Extra, but uh, a tough one. But Isaiah Brown is our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Quite a performance, 18 points in the game. I, I was happy the way he played. I mean, he was solid in the first half and solid in the second half. He was very balanced out there tonight. He, he shows an ability to try to lead this team from example, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is impressive for a guy that sat so long outside of basketball. Right. He just comes in there and does his thing. I love that shot a high percentage from the field, six of nine. Um, he was three of four from uh, the free throw line as well. He had those six rebounds, I thought. He went in there, uh, and that's what this team needs is for game rebounding. Everybody, especially in the backcourt, has got to step up and rebound the ball. And I love that one there. His, he just knocked that three-pointer down when they were starting to lose touch with the Illini a little bit in the first half, and then that corner pocket three was huge. And, and, and he just moved well without the basketball, even though he's probably used to playing more with the basketball in his hand. He has let Blackshear Jr. have the ball in his hands a little bit more because he's just better with the basketball in his hands. 83-71 is the uh, stats. I like that. Are changing as we speak. The rebounds is the toughest one uh, on there. Yeah, 52 to 26 is just getting really beat up on the boards as fighting the line. And I go over 50 rebounds for the second consecutive games. And look at the disadvantage that they had from the free throw line. Shot 14 less free throws from the line on your home floor than the line I just they was getting beat up on the glass and on drives to the basket. Wow, the uh, line had, what, 53 rebounds in their overtime win at Nickel State, 52 here. Bishanishvili, Coburn, they, uh, they are uh, just a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, it looks battled, though. I mean, they yeah, fight. They look, at these, look at these scrapping plays here, deflections, steals, uh, getting um, uh, offensive rebounds, diving on the floor for balls. That's the effort that it takes to get a victory. And they were outmanned tonight and outsized, giving up LBs, giving up inches. But they gave they gave no less effort than the team in the white jersey. Now let's go back and revisit those keys. We talked about the shed equipment, having to build around a, a shed around that painted area. I don't know if they really did that. And they got beat up on the glass pretty bad. Um, passed the basketball around, 12 assists. Not the number that I was hoping for. I was looking for closer to that 16 to 18 range. You get some open shots, get some guys to knock some down. And then who was going to be that leader? Who was going to be that on the court leader? Well, tonight, I got to give it to the youngest player out there for the Lopes, Javon Blackshear Jr. Right. I think when things kind of got a little sidewise, being able to play with the four fouls most of the second half, 
That was impressive to me. I mean, he tells his offensive number, does great things, but they only got him on the stat sheet for three assists. But it was a lot of times that he was passing basketball to guys where they were getting opportunities to get fouled and go to the free throw line as well. So I really like the moxie of this young freshman stepping up and being a leader on the floor tonight. You know what's going to be fun is to see him develop. He is a freshman. I mean, but he is super poised. And you're gonna, it's going to be great to see that maturation process. And you, you see it already that, you, that he's going to be a leader. He's going to be a floor general. Well, you, you talked about his high school career, playing yeah. in state championships, going on the road and playing against other top team, 25 teams in the country, playing on ESPN. There's no moment too big for this young man. It's a loss, but you, you needed this type of, uh, of counter after that tough, tough blow against Davenport where they just did not come out. They didn't lead at any point during that game, and they came out here and they gave it. You, you saw the sense of urgency. You saw that that fight here. Energy. That this, yeah, energy. Yeah, they didn't have that on Tuesday night for whatever reason. I didn't know if it was the, the learning about the, the, the suspensions to a couple yeah. of their star players. Um, but you have got to come out here and compete. That's the number one thing that is written on every locker board about across the NBA. I don't care who's out there, who is shorthanded, who's injured, whatever. You've got to compete. And that's how you get that's what you love to do anyway. You've been doing it since you were, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. You got to go out there and battle. It's tough as uh, Alessandro Labor continues to kind of feel that position, know what to do, what maybe not to do. Some of them are really tough. As you mentioned, even in the second half, the, the whistle started to come out a little bit. Uh, but Alessandro not being on the floor here to close things out was, was a tough one. Yeah, we were, you know, 10 points in the first half. And even with the, you know, the, the, the two fouls and the third foul coming in that first half, we knew he couldn't be too aggressive on the defensive end. Got his fourth foul on, a, on an offensive a set. But you got to like the way he was able to move. He got the ball at the high post. Do a little pump fake with the shoulders. Drive it hard to the basket around the 290 pounder. That was impressive to me. Be able to finish with some contact. And then when the big guy sagged off, he said, well, now I get to do what I want to do is right. really do this little pick and pop and shoot my ball from three. So I really like this little loss of 20 pounds. Doesn't seem like he's lost any strength, but he's a lot quicker on the floor. And J.J. Rimes looked pretty uh, sharp coming off the bench as well as we await the arrival of head coach Dan Marley. Let's send it downstairs with Kate Longworth is the Lopes insider Paul Coro. Hey guys, all right. Well, I'm joined now by Paul Coro and uh, Paul, we were kind of just breaking down stuff on our own with this game. How big was it for the Loops and what did you see stand out in this bounce back rebound performance? Obviously not the result, but really the competition level was there today. Yeah, the better effort really wasn't surprised with the opponent that they had and the crowd atmosphere and everything. But what was better was how they shot threes. And I think in a game where your top two players don't play at their optimum alley, labor limited to 16 minutes, Carlos Johnson have an off night. There they were still within four points down the stretch to have a chance to win with basically the same five guys playing the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, and I think that urgency that we were wondering why they didn't have that whole game in the last two minutes we saw in that last game. Tonight it comes out. And I think, too, one thing that stood out was from the get-go. The Lopes were ready to be out there and establish their type of ball. What was going on in the last couple of days of practice that you believe led into that? I think there was just more buy-in to the defensive plan. You saw the perimeter defense was better tonight, um, extending. They, they had a a load to handle down load. And that was really unfortunate at times. You know, some of the stuff that Laver got called on really wasn't because he was guarding the, <laughs> the biggest man he'll probably yeah. see all season. You know, it's a high screen where he's out wide and clips him on his leg. It's, you know, the knickknack stuff like that that's probably disappointing because he was having a pretty good game. But I think the buy-in all around, the ball movement, uh, you saw guys pass up threes to get in the lane. Isaiah Brown kind of getting into his floater right. game. Javon Blackshear Jr. getting to the rim and creating for other guys. J.J. Rimes, again, being a bit of a spark off the bench with his creativity around the rim. And we also talked about this team kind of needing a, a leader to emerge out there and to establish some type of play out there. And also when the team was in a huddle or what was going on, that they would get this team fired up, get them going. Did you see anyone emerge as that? Yeah, I think that's still to be determined. I, I think I see it gradually in practices and game with Isaiah Brown, but you know, it's his first season playing for the Lopes, even though he's been around the program for a whole year behind the scenes as a red shirt, but he's got that intelligence and maturity and 
Um, sometimes he's running the point. We know Javon Blackshear Jr. Right. down the line is going to be that guy, but it's a lot to ask of him as a freshman coming straight out of high school. Yeah, but he certainly stepped up his game. Or really, he he played the game. I think he knows how to play. What impressed you with his game? He has the youth out there, but he definitely has the skills. He well, he has the poise beyond a freshman, but he's also fearless. I mean, you saw him go in there and draw the fifth foul on the big man. He went right into the teeth of the defense, and that was a huge play during that comeback. You know, when they're down four with. Labor fouling out with 10 plus minutes to go. You're wondering if there's going to be another response in GCU, and they just whittled away. And what I liked was it was different guys that got him back in the game. It was the team defense, the crashing, giving up 20 offensive rebounds, just too many extra opportunities. But they came up with some big plays. Rhymes drove twice, that got him back into the game. Then Lorenzo Jenkins hit a big three. We've kind of been waiting to see that out of his game. And it's, I think everybody is relieved to see some three point sh shots go down after the two for 19 the game the other night. You are with this team on the road against big opponents, against whack opponents. You see everything that they go up against. But tonight, how big is it for the program when they bring in an opponent like Illinois? And we saw a lot of people from the community, the basketball community, the area, coming to the game tonight to be a part of what's happening here at GCU. Yeah, a lot of familiar places, faces. I'm sure you saw them all. But also behind the scenes, the, the NBA scouts that were here. Uh, celebrities, sports figures, and a lot of people wanted to be part of this game tonight because it was it's not often you're going to get a power five opponent to come into this arena. Too many people know what's what it's like in here and they don't want to deal with that. Um, but it was great to see the crowd get back, you know, to what it, we believe we and know it is always. But also, I think Dan Marley never wants to talk about moral victories and, you know, the right. programs beyond that. But tonight, in a way, sort of was because they're about to go on the road to San Diego State, a really strong program, and they needed something to build off of the way they played three nights ago. Huge progress in three days to be in the game with Illinois down the stretch. And we continue here to wait. Um, Dan Marley obviously joins the press here. Uh, last time he took a while against Davenport. We, <laughs> we figured that was why <laughs> this one Maybe they're in there celebrating. You know Dan Marley very well. Uh, probably uh, he's not celebrating. The anyway. one thing we've learned is to <laughs> never uh, put money on what you think Dan Marley is going to act like. Right after a game, you just never know. Yeah, you know, and he, kind of the day after the game, he sort of took on a different tone that, you know, teams teams take losses. And he took another look at the threes, right. and they weren't all bad. Right. Well, thank you so much, Paul Coral, for weighing in on this. And I'm going to send it back upstairs, guys, so you can uh, finish up our coverage. All right. Thank you. Due to uh, time constraints, uh, we are going to be unable to carry the post-game press conference with head coach Dan Marley. We apologize for that, and hopefully we we'll, we will uh, try to expedite those those press conferences, but obviously he had to be pleased with his effort against the Illini tonight despite the loss. I think that's probably what he told his team in the locker room. I mean, that was a pretty big, strong, quick, fast, smart basketball team with 85% of their offense returning. you got seven newcomers yeah. to this Lopes basketball team. It's going to take a while for them to start to gel together, but they gave the effort tonight, and yeah. that was the important thing. Well, that'll do it as the Lopes travel to uh, San Diego to take on San Diego State on the road. You can tune into 1580 AM or 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM as well. But the uh, Lopes will be on the, the road and then return back to GCU Arena as our next telecast will be November 16th when GCU hosts Arkansas Pine Bluff. The final score here tonight from GCU Arena, the Fighting Illini 83, the GCU Lopes 71. We'll talk to you on the 16th of November, but until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.